Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. What is the advantage that Satan can have over men? Our being ignorant of his devices is an advantage to Satan. This is the Bible. We're starting tonight. That the Bible says whoever by any means is ignorant of the operation of darkness and how Satan operates to afflict the saints, you have given Satan, no matter who you are, you have given him an advantage. He said, lest Satan should get an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices, his methodology, his system of operation. That means if we, for any reason, become careless about meticulously studying the operation of Satan, and the way he can afflict and even subjugate the saints, the Bible says, the apostle speaking, that it can become an advantage. Think how many families, think how many churches, brothers and sisters, think how many well-meaning pastors, think how many people who call upon the name of the Lord day and night have given Satan an advantage, not by inviting him directly, by allowing the deception that paying attention to the operation of Satan is not spirituality and we have given him an advantage. We have not been able to interpret the happenings in our lives and we have not understood these things and so we continue to try. We continue to fight a fight that is in ignorance with defeat being imminent but then the Bible says less Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant we are not ignorant that's the key to closing the door we are not ignorant we are not ignorant paul said i am not ignorant but i have also taught you so we that means there are some people who are ignorant we are not ignorant of his devices last week we began to teach on deliverance as a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Christ over Satan, over demons, and over the powers of darkness concerning our lives. I did teach us last week that there are three levels of satanic influences. I'm just doing a quick recap for the sake of those who are not here. That the first is called deception. And that all men can be deceived, including the saints. It is possible. Deception. We explore that. And then the next level is manipulation and control. And I told us that this is the realm of the mind. Where Satan can take advantage of your understanding, of your thinking. And manipulate your understanding. And the third, we saw that it was... Um, complete influence and control that's what we call possession where an individual is completely under the influence of satan such as the case of the madman in gadara in mark chapter 5 and then we explain a number of things the teachings are available you can get them 
and I told us that the greatest strength of Satan is the flesh the flesh the flesh so I'll talk a little bit about the flesh and then we'll share something um, I struggle to do my best to see that we exhaust this teaching tonight but I, I do not know there is so much to say as I was just preparing and studying I was wondering what part do I include and what part do I not include this subject is so broad you can have even part 1 to 30 and not repeat anything there is so much that the saints do not know so we'll see how God will help us tonight why are we teaching this number one it is a revelation of the mercy and the love of God to us to grant us access to these truths number two because the season has come for us to possess our possessions and according to Obadiah 1 17 it says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions are we together so let's look at the flesh what exactly is the flesh seeing that it is one of the greatest weapons of Satan I'll touch on it um, very briefly and then I want to teach us something very powerful Romans chapter 17 and verse chapter 7 and verse 18 Romans 7 and verse 18 I'd like you to read with me one two read for I know that in me that is my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not who is speaking who is speaking this is not a baby Christian speaking this is not someone who just got born again yesterday this is not one student of some rabbi this is one who has been granted access he's 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 opening the tragedy of the flesh and the the imminent doom that befalls anyone who chooses to walk in this realm that the bible calls the flesh what is the flesh he says for i know that in me he's not just talking about his body necessarily that is my flesh dwelleth what no good thing if you fail an exam and you get 37 you pass some you just didn't pass enough but if you get zero there's no possibility the bible says the flesh there is no good thing not some no good thing that means if you dwell in the realm of the flesh you have given satan the biggest advantage over your life it doesn't matter what else you do you have submitted yourself for defeat what is the flesh write this down the flesh is defined as a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of God the flesh a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of God so it affects your life it affects your mind it affects your body every part of you are we together the flesh every time the Bible talks of the flesh or the old man has different expressions the the understanding is twofold this is not my major discussion tonight but I want to at least do justice there the the first dimension is what the Bible calls the sin nature the man who is not regenerate the Bible no matter how innocent you are in fact here's how the prophet puts it he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me so he didn't have to do anything directly the very nature of the fallen man one who has not encountered the life the Zoe life of God the Bible defines that that person 
born and living in the flesh so the sin nature are we together now the remedy for that is not counseling the remedy for that is the deliverance that we call salvation i hope you know salvation is deliverance yes salvation there is the special deliverance to remedy that nature you can't correct it it's not a nature that you correct it's not a nature that you renew it has to be taken away completely through the substitutionary work of jesus christ only a genuine encounter with the son of god the bible says and this is the record remember that god hath given us what eternal life so way and it says this life is in his son it says so that whosoever has the son has that life he said whoever does not have the son doesn't have that life so there is no assumption as to whether that nature is in you or not if you have not encountered the son no matter how you convince yourself zoe is not in you you may have money you may have education you may feel good about yourself but the nature the very nature just because you feel good about yourself doesn't mean you are free listen listen we're addressing something that is spiritual in context just because you feel you have never done anything wrong in your life doesn't mean you are free are we together now many times our minds and our consciences will deceive us into thinking because we look so far and think we are innocent and then we believe that the innocence brought the nature by itself no there is no assumption about that nature it is taken away only by the blood of the eternal covenant the blood of jesus christ himself and this life is in his son so that whosoever has the son has eternal life if you are not born again that life is not in you period if you are not born again that nature is still at work in you that is the chiefest authorization of satan greater than even any covenant that you have willfully brought yourself under the government of satan that's why i said i said before you the choice is yours life and death i said before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you i can't force you choose life that you may live one of the ways you choose life is to say lord i i i submit to your government i come willingly out of the government and the hold of satan is deliverance the name of that deliverance is salvation as free and cheap as it is you must participate in it otherwise it will not work are you getting what i'm saying now so the sin nature but number two the second dimension of the flesh and and that is that is the one that i think af affects us because i know that a greater number of us here by the grace of god are born again we've given our life to christ and so based on the authority of the word we know that that nature is gone but the second the second dimension of what the bible calls the flesh is a stronghold write it down a stronghold a stronghold A stronghold in our minds that is fortified by the presence of demon spirits a stronghold this is flesh now the Bible is talking about a stronghold in our minds that is fortified listen carefully fortified by the presence of demon spirits are we together motivated by self-centeredness vainglory and self-exaltation a stronghold in our minds fortified by the presence of demon spirits that is motivated by self-centeredness write it down self-centeredness vainglory vainglory and then number three self-exaltation that's what the bible calls the flesh so when the bible speaks of the flesh within the context of a believer he's talking of a stronghold that is present not in your spirit a stronghold that is present within your mind within the solical realm 
are we together now that is fortified the fact that it is not can you see that even in your mind demons are still there follow me you will be blessed tonight motivated by self-centeredness remember my teaching christ-centeredness motivated by self-centeredness motivated by vain glory motivated by self-exaltation this the bible says that nature that nature there is no good thing in that nature that means whoever entertains that nature to control and govern your life the result is already predictable there is no good thing no matter how much deliverance gallons and gallons of anointing oil no matter how much prayer and fasting no matter what you do if this nature is allowed unattended to then paul already gives you your faith are you seeing the reason why many deliverance ministries for instance it looks like it's an endless struggle of attempting to do something you can pray dry you can pray all kinds you can do all kinds and and find out that in the midst of it it looks like forever you are casting spirits it looks like forever you are casting spirits it's like a journey of consistently casting spirits this is it and satan knows satan does not mind entertaining you during your deliverance sessions for as long as he finds out that this is unattended to you can do every other thing you want to do he will be glad to be represented and flatter you into thinking you are so anointed whereas the major issue has not been dealt with a stronghold a stronghold and satan has taken advantage of the church listen very carefully because we have been taught that a believer cannot be possessed that is true but possession is not the only way spirits participate in your life i'm going to be showing you now so we mean that just because a believer is not possessed every other thing that happens is just his thinking that is not working well uh, leave satan out and we have allowed satan to mess up our our understanding the construction of our beliefs and you find out that although you know the zoe life is in your spirit how come in the soul realm you are so helpless to him to the point that it even looks like your salvation is a lie are you ready to follow me on this journey tonight the flesh the bible gives us let me just tidy it up so that we we'll leave this and and just go very quickly the bible tells us what to do with the flesh galatians chapter 5 we'll read 15 to 17 then we'll jump to colossians chapter 3 1 and 2 16 and 7 galatians chapter 5 16 and 17 16 let's start from 16 galatians 5 16 this i say then the same paul is speaking what is the remedy for the flesh walk ye it didn't say receive the spirit walk ye in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh he's telling you this remedy you are not just going to say flesh i'm i'm tired of you no he's saying you must find a way whatever this is walk ye in the spirit and then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh 17 he says for the flesh lusted against the spirit notice what is the flesh attacking talk to me what is the flesh attacking that the flesh will look for everything the spirit of god has created for you to do and that's what it fights the assignment of the flesh is to cause you to consistently violate the ways of the spirit and the spirit also that means when you are spirit controlled you will find yourself fighting the attributes of the flesh and the bible said this too these two are contrary the one to another so that ye cannot do the things that he will let me explain to you what this means in any case you are not just allowed to do what you want there has to be one of them 
So you are under conflict. Today you are this, tomorrow you are that. And Paul is saying, let me explain to you that these vacillations is as a result of a war. The war is an attempt by the flesh or the spirit to gain dominance over your life. That you feel so prayerful today and tomorrow you just sit down and say, God, to hell with this Jesus self, I'm not even sure. Paul is saying it's not your fault. I'm explaining to you. At the point you were saying to hell, you are still not on your own. Are we together now? Another force, another agency. You are only executing what that agency has planted within you. Mm. The flesh. People talk so much about the power of God. They talk so much about freedom, yet they never talk about the flesh. And so Satan doesn't mind our fasting. Satan doesn't mind our prayer because he knows that that stronghold is there. And what a joy to Satan when he finds out that you advise yourself that just because I am in Christ, automatically, the only thing that is left is just for me to keep receiving scripture. And as I receive scripture, I will change automatically. It looks very spiritual, but I'll be showing you it's a dimension of deception. Because many of us have been doing it obediently and it has not been working. As always, we have been trained to keep quiet and, and, and not to be honest enough. So we make it look like I'm, I'm okay, everything is fine. No, you are not fine. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 and then we'll go to 1 and 2 then 16 and 17 look at this Paul is now buttressing on what he means by walking in the spirit remember he already told us that when you walk in the spirit you can conquer the flesh one of the ways you walk in the spirit is what read with me one to read if ye then be risen with Christ that means if it is true that you claim that you are risen with Christ it says seek those things which are where above seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of the father verse 2 set your mind set your affection now he uses something very interesting your affection your affinity your desire your longing set it like you set a thermometer set it to make sure that it is focused on the things above and not on the things that are of the earth are we together and then verse 16 says let the word of christ dwell in you richly now notice it says richly in all wisdom that's a very serious part we neglect it's not just enough for the word of god to dwell in you in terms of verses just he said no wisdom it should be constructed in a way that profits you the word of christ can dwell in you in a way that you are just accumulating scripture but it's not profiting you it says there must be a construction of the word of god in such a way and a manner that that word is done in wisdom then teaching and admonishing one another in psalms spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart from the lord last verse 17 and then we are done now watch this and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the lord jesus christ he's teaching us the various strategies that can help you to walk in the spirit one of it is says set your affections number two do all you do in the name as touching the government and the office that you represent walk in the consciousness of the fact that you are under an authority he's teaching here of the various ways that you can set your mind believers hear me let me tell you sincerely no matter how much prayer and how much fasting and how much casting of a demon that you cast out of someone if that person has made up his mind to be carnal and fleshly and not set your mind on spiritual things i hate to be a bearer of bad news but you only succeeded in wasting your time i give you a guarantee satan has infinite ways of returning back to that person the bible tells us when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't go and say okay i've even satan left jesus for a while he came back again to find out jesus have you been discouraged so far i left you when you were about to start ministry if satan left jesus for a while whatever makes you think that just because he left you five years ago he has gone and said okay serve god with all mm -mm. 
is waiting for you at the corner of discouragement is waiting for you where your money finishes he's waiting for you where you have a bad news or where you lose a loved one here he comes again because he knows that these things have a way of seeming to bring us down from that that echelon of spirituality it now brings us down and satan comes the bible says walk ye in the spirit i know you don't like what i'm teaching tonight but it's a powerful formula as simple as it is it's a powerful formula the flesh that stronghold the mistake that many people are now trying to make you see in correcting look at this come there is a difference between transformation happens in the realm of the mind but transformation is spiritual it's a miracle let's not reduce transformation to just the realm of scientology where we say put formula a add b to it no 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 principles are not just scientific formulas principles are spiritual laws that are backed up with the very power and presence of god get this please because when you study online and go around you find out that um sometimes if you are not careful you can just sit down and all you are doing is searching for laws at random just because something is a law and it works you just carry it and throw it in your mind and convince yourself that just because you put in an information that looks superior to what you already know automatically you just go no laws on their own don't drive spirits transformation is a powerful miracle it's another kind of deliverance the first dimension of transformation is not receiving the word the first dimension is the spirit entities that guard that stronghold must be taken away that deliverance must happen to you you can be a pastor prophet apostle bishop whatever you can be and flatter yourself that because of the 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 physical paraphernalia that is around your ministry you are free no you will need that deliverance you can pray in tongues non-stop every day for many years and that stronghold is just quietly watching you you reign you reign hello king you reign you about deliverance now there are a number of things I want to teach you about deliverance let's talk about demons Let's talk a little bit i have to if i don't talk about demons um i'm looking at my course content here can we talk a little about demons matthew chapter 13 verse 24 to 30. let's go to the parable of jesus i want us to study a bit on on demons look at this another parable look up please he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven that means the operation of the kingdom of heaven is likened to this a man which sowed good seed everybody say a man everybody say seed one more time say a man say seed he sowed good seed the fact that the bible specified good seed already is a message are we together remember my message during the prayer and fasting 25 but while men slept 
wild man did what his enemy came also having a seed his enemy didn't come with a knife his enemy didn't come with a gun his enemy watched what he sowed and came with his own too watch this and the bible says he came and sowed tears among the wheat and did what and went his way he represented his presence with the seed are we together now he went away when he dropped that seed there he didn't need to stay there again because he knew that the seed was a replica of himself but when the blade was sprung up so that which was a seed now became something else and brought forth fruit then appeared tears also so the servants of the household that came and said unto him sir did did not thou sow good seed in thy field in other words ah, didn't you get born again where did this come from are you not a pastor's child are you not a, 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 a prophet's daughter? Are you not, is it not you that was baptized yesterday? Where did this come from? From whence then had it tears? 28. And he said, an enemy has done this. And then his servant told him, will thou that we gather them up? And then he says, allow it. That's, that's what 29 and 30 says. Lest while we gather up the tears, we root up the wheat in them. And then verse 30 let them both grow together until harvest in the time of the harvest i will say to the reapers gather first the tears that means something will happen in the time of harvest that will show the difference but as it is now you can't see it and if in an attempt watch this if you understand this mystery you will know why you can be doing many things and god will not talk to you about it it doesn't mean that he doesn't see it is because if he wants to circumcise you at that level it will affect your growth process so bad so he will be patient with you to just grow you can be an arrogant man and god will never say anything about your arrogance so you will think that you are all right just because he's not talking about it a day will come as you keep walking with him when he sees that you are now mature to undergo that level of spiritual circumcision he will take you back to the subject of arrogance and you will be surprised that you are in that level of height and now god is dealing with the issue of arrogance the seed the seed this this demon spirits that we're talking about we have to understand them you hear people say demons everywhere many of you here in koinonia and around you've seen demons come out of people you've seen their violence you've seen their aggression sometimes you hear people speak you know another spirit many of you watch tv around or go for meetings where you who are they where where do they come from genesis chapter 3 let's see how we can look at it oh jesus is God blessing us already? Genesis chapter 3. Give us verse 15. Genesis chapter 3. Let me just touch on it. And that God will grant us grace. Now, by way of introduction to this, I hope you know that Paul the Apostle, Paul the Apostle did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that when the bible says darkness is a combination of many things i hope you know that when the bible says darkness and it says spirits dark spirits is not just one a consummation of just a group of demons it is the summation of every spirit entity and every kind of spiritual organogram that is antagonistic to the ways of god because I'll, as i'll be showing you there are many there are many this is the Lord now speaking with the woman after their fall. I'm just saving time. That's why I said we should go to verse 15. If you're with me, say amen. And I will put enmity. Who is speaking here? God. Between thee and the woman. Between Satan and the woman. God is speaking to them both now. I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. He would have stopped there and then we we'll understand. But then he says, I will also put enmity between what? Thy seed and her seed. So the, the person he's talking to has seed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He's talking to Satan 
as one who has seed the capacity to multiply himself and his agenda hi and he looks at the woman you don't talk to a woman about seed because you know from biology that women don't have seed they receive seed so the thing confused satan god why are you now talking about her seed where is it going to come from that's why the moment cain came satan believed that cain was that seed and tried to attack him from that day till moses till everybody till john the baptist once satan sees a male that a woman is giving birth to he starts pursuing them because he suspects that that may be the seed are you getting the point now between your seed and her seed now questions we have seen the seed of the woman we are part of that seed correct where is the seed of satan because the bible lets us know very clearly god himself speaking that as the woman is multiplying her own seed this spirit entity is multiplying his own seed too are we together genesis chapter 6 genesis chapter 6 and it came to pass i'm fast forwarding now it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the surface of the earth listen carefully it says and daughters were born unto them what happened verse 2 that the sons of god the hebrew word there is benign elohim it's not just sons of god like it was an error in translation it's not like sons of god like believers no are we together like like progenitors those who were part of his creation this were a class of angels that this class of angels came and saw the daughters of men do you know who these angels were these angels were not just the exalted angels because i hope you know that by the time the angels that fought with lucifer fell from heaven the ones that came down with him adam was not there adam's story and genesis one was not there they had fallen in a particular dispensation are you getting what i'm saying now mm. so by the time god is creating adam or recreating the earth and making adam there are already inhabitants in the earth satan alongside the myriads of fallen angels are you getting what i'm saying now mm. and because spirits don't die in the context of cessation of life i will tell you what the death of a spirit is I, I i told you i was going to tell you but spirits don't die in the context of ceasing from breathing and ceasing from movement the moment adam came to start another race these spirits were looking for a way to find expression are we together now it's a very serious thing and the bible says that while they were voyaging around the earth all of a sudden they saw the daughters of men that they were fair to look upon it's a scriptural way of saying they were very beautiful are we together that means those angels had feelings hello it's not all the classes of angels that you know theologically there are all kinds of arguments whether angels have the, uh, the ability to reproduce or not and we, we see it here that the angels saw the daughter of men the daughters of men and they took them wives that means they could marry they came down and saw beautiful ladies like you looking at me now and the angels chose they advised themselves he said look let's marry these women verse 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for seeing that his flesh is they shall be 120 verse 4 there were what now watch this the bible just tells us that a come darling an angel are we together now a fallen angel benign elohim all of a sudden sees human people pure humans and the bible says took them to wives and all of a sudden we now see the manifestation of a species that the bible calls them what i'm trying to trace the origin of demons for you that giants until this time there were no demons on earth 
there were fallen angels there were other dark spirits that had been in other civilizations but not demons these giants were in the earth the bible says that when the sons of god came into the daughters of men you know what that means and they bear what children that means that the seed those fallen angels had seed within them and that their seeds got these women pregnant and they gave birth to these giants who were mighty men of old men of renown are you following my story now so we trace that these women were minding their business all of a sudden these beings come that there is a possibility ah goodness so spirits can get physical women pregnant so we see that there's no argument there are we together this information is useful we need it because that's how jesus came into the world are we together now listen carefully jesus came into the world how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man joseph has not finished paying my dowry don't embarrass me and he said no a spirit is coming from heaven i will show you this is the mystery goodness i'm already excited let me just take it easy so these spirits came and all of a sudden when the women gave birth to children the children started growing unusually they had features that were superhuman it was clear that these spirits were not pure humans the seed of lucifer in those children started cursing them the bible says god saw that the wickedness of man this spirit started introducing attributes upon the earth men were not that wicked all of a sudden there was a fabrication of different levels of wickedness and then the people in the earth ah, who are these beings that can be so wicked that means a normal man has a maximum level to which his heart can conceive evil if evil goes beyond that level something else is responsible for that level of heartlessness follow me because as i taught you this seed is still on earth today are we together the bible says that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually this was not the case now man had become so depraved the bible says and it repented the lord that he had made the man in the earth and it grieved his heart now watch this thank you darling did you know the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that i have made them just stop there god is regretting these spirits have found their way back into this Adamic civilization. They were there casted. Now with the ability to reproduce, they found a way of creating continuity for themselves. Because remember the law of territory, if you don't have a body, these angels, these spirits, because they are not demons, it is demons that don't have bodies. Angels have bodies. That's why they could come to even meet. Angels can translate themselves into physical bodies. Is that true remember the angels that came to abraham they didn't come as ghosts flying they were human beings this was what caused the flood of noah are you getting what i'm saying now the flood of noah was a system of judgment that god needed to annihilate that entire race the question is the giants let me use you again the giant children that were born by these angels and this when the flood happened because spirits don't die in terms of cessation of living the bodies now died and the spirits are you getting the point now the spirits of all those race the name of those giants as you know theologically speaking is called the nephilims are we together now this disembodied spirits because every time a spirit is not in a body what happens it becomes restless these spirits they can't go to heaven they can't go to hell and they float within the circumference of earth and the second heavens and that is the reason why these spirits today are those we call demons listen carefully 
the demon spirits that you call are the spirits of these nephilims the sons before demons came there was already darkness listen carefully before demons came they were already fallen angels the fallen angels and the daughters of men produce what we call demons disembodied spirits now watch this look up i want to prove a few things for you i, I hope that you are getting what are you get are we are we still together let me just know that we're together do you know that fallen angels cannot possess men there is no record in scripture from genesis to revelation where a spirit was inside a man are we together now and then they ask who are you and he says um i'm angel so 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 and so no no it may look like it is the spirit but those i will tell you what their office is because those fallen angels are still working today but they are not the ones inside men are we together those disembodied spirits are the ones who move and i hope you know that the disembodied spirits that fell are by far more than the number of human beings on earth that's why ten thousand of them will not mind finding accommodation in one man there is a desperate need for accommodation among those demon spirits till today look at look at how they cry when you want to cast them out that means they don't <laughs> listen are you seeing the extreme violence now please don't feel bad many of you have been delivered many of you will be delivered this night but listen notice that you will see a kind quiet person brother or sister and all of a sudden when those spirits are provoked by the power of god it will take five people to suddenly hold one person you see the way people are rolling on the floor there is no power you try rolling like that by yourself and see what happens another entity this disembodied spirit to the point that when jesus was about to cast them they begged him they said jesus you know our condition you are not in ignorance as to what is happening to us where do you because they know it's hard to find a body that can allow you to be comfortable that's why when they find it they go straight to the realm of your mind and create a system that makes sure even if they evict them they can still come back please understand what i'm teaching you and you will be free you will experience victory and you will possess your possession demon spirits they are everywhere today as i'm talking now there are demon spirits around hoping and waiting where will i get accommodation now are we together now where will i get accommodation now this is what it means for spirits to die when they say a demon spirit should die is the restlessness that is created by exiting it from a mortal body it is an intense state of torture no spirit no spirit is like putting you inside water and dropping you there that's exactly what you do when that's why they cry and they beg they make sure they don't leave they negotiate all kinds of things jesus have you come to cast us shall we have a time now jesus said go say let's look at they drowned the swine they were so desperate for bodies they entered pigs for a few minutes just so that they can find a place to rest the pigs were entering water they said yes let's just be rested before you enter the water you see why satan hates deliverance you may not know what it is that is the reason why when you cast out devils you are in trouble because satan will mobilize any kind of attack on your life attack on anything he knows what is happening is God helping us are we understanding something so this spirit but there are other kinds of spirit I hope you know that the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer are not the only angels that have fallen <laughs> there are many group of offenses there are others who fell so bad they are in chains now they are not even allowed to be featured in that's the level of wickedness those guys are more wicked than satan himself what they did to god we'll find out when we get to heaven that god and they they were cast down not to the earth satan was cast down and left in the earth 
but these spirits were taken straight to the bottomless pit and were bound there with chains because for the sake of the elect they were not left on earth what would they have done that means even satan would have been afraid of them I'm demystifying this thing to you. Whether it comes as occultism, whether it comes as Oboni, there is a central system of operation. It's when it comes to execution that all those variations come. The foundation of all of this is this spirit finding a resting place. And when this... <sighs> these angels watch their children called demons move around with no bodies in intense torture and so they say let's work together we will coordinate you while you enter the people will tell you what to do and so paul said wow so there are principalities there are powers there are rulers then there are others who don't operate in the earth realm there are spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places they all coordinate themselves one one demon spoke on behalf of 10,000 of them. It was when Jesus asked him, who are you? He now said, we are many. Oh. Forget that you are hearing only my voice. There is a, an intelligent organogram. Brothers and sisters, if one human body can host 10,000 demons, then it's important for you to listen. One demon, one body can be so powerful if one body can host God, why can't it host demons? That a man's body can be the temple of the living God. Let me just compose myself and get somewhere. Because if you don't understand this, what are you delivering? You see where we miss it? We just come and tell somebody there's a spirit. Oh yeah, we bend his head and just turn him round. Oh yeah, you must come out. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'll hug you after I'm done with my example. And you turn his head round, and the guy just says, Man, let me just quietly fall for this guy to leave me in peace. And he just falls down and you, you tell him to say thank you, Jesus. He repeats after you. You get up and you are happy. And the demon spirit says, Wow, what ignorance. Advantage. Advantage. Demon spirits can dwell in your spirit demon spirits can dwell in your mind demon spirits can dwell in your body when you tell somebody you cast a demon it just comes out you don't know where it came out from it will re you the same way it comes out from your spirit your soul and your body physically it will look the same it takes discernment to know what happened and the authority of scripture that guides you if that person you are delivering is a believer then you know certainly it must not be from his spirit because he that is joined to christ is one spirit are we together but that does not mean this is where many of us have been surprised because for many years you believe that no these demons cannot find expression you came for koinonia to your surprise praise and worship was going on and all of a sudden you are feeling as if somebody is drawing your clothes you are saying what is happening the next thing you are sweeping the ground you are waking up after 10 minutes what is wrong and you are a pastor and you are, you are, you are a, 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 a prayer leader and your members were watching and say ha ah, oh god prayer leader what i hope that this impact we received impartation the night before this deliverance so what really entered us no you don't stigmatize people a spiritual childishness to think just because a demon was casted out that no 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 you don't do that the fact that you are being delivered is a sign that you are in mount zion it's not something that should make you ashamed the, the, that means you have gotten to a place where the light and the power of god is forcing those spirits to be uncomfortable it's a thing of joy You have to understand these demon spirits because they are everywhere there are many ways they can enter that's why they are desperate you can know that these spirits are let me tell you this those spirits have on you their characteristics you know that they are in or around your life because whatever they produce in your life is abnormal are we together 
a demon spirit can find expression and you can start having abnormal passion for food you can eat the food of 10 people it's called gluttony it's not a medical condition the spirit is eating through you even you you know that by myself i cannot eat this kind of food listen listen this spirit now enters you and begins to manifest an unusual passion then you marry one wife the spirit is not satisfied with one woman you now say oh let me just be careful this is my one and only wife the spirit says no way and all of a sudden you add 12 more and the spirit says more you add 12 more and the spirit says you are delaying me let's let's switch to to the point that the spirit can be patient if he doesn't find women it will make a man like a man it's not normal these are the spirits behind it listen very carefully that's what happened in the days of noah these spirits you see are not weak they are not foolish they are not stupid the moment they find a body they start manifesting their characteristic the same way when the holy spirit finds a body all of a sudden an anointing you shouldn't have i shouldn't know your name where did it come it's obvious that it's not me something has taken charge of my faculties and is revealing to me something that i should not know ordinary me if i stand close to you maybe if we fight you will even beat me but all of a sudden i will lift my hand and this guy is on the floor now is that me no the same way i'm supposed to give you peace ordinarily but because of the demon spirit in me when i come near you your life must scatter it's not me hear me married people this is a mistake people are coming with forces and influences they don't even know and you find uh, this is the mistake that prophets make again listen carefully especially if you're in the prophetic here because they now look and say oh your wife is a witch she's not a witch for some reason she's she's hosting a habitation of certain spirit beings that are creating an effect even her she will tell you i don't know why everybody i come near if it's their business it dies if it's everything it dies are you seeing why some of you the moment somebody comes to say i love you i want to go and see your parents the spirit in him will say am i not already there so what do you want to do now tragedies listen very carefully those spirits feed on things and they put in you desires that will continue to feed them while they remain that's why you can sit down and they will wake you in the night to carry your laptop and type something you should not watch and you are watching you hate what you are watching but the spirit is feeding on it it is the atmosphere that will keep it there your majesty your majesty that come to you in the dream world they carry the face of a man they carry the face of a woman they carry the face of an object a loved one it doesn't matter they are doing something to you all of a sudden you want to give someone a job and you say by tomorrow please come and collect the job you go to bed notice all of a sudden they have come the dream will carry different you may see yourself in primary school second it doesn't matter what form it comes they are still the ones listen to me all of a sudden they may come and molest you they may come and do whatever they want to do and you stand up in the morning to you you don't know what happened you dress very smart sir i've come to collect my employment letter and the man will say if i see you here you had the testimony of our mommy here how can you tell somebody else? this is what has made many of your helpers to leave you they will promise you send me your account and all of a sudden you go to bed and those spirits are here we don't know the bible said lest satan should take an advantage of you for we are not ignorant 
ignorant. This is the number one cause, number one cause, number one cause of barrenness, number one cause of impotency, the jealousy of those spirits. The very jealousy of those spirits. With all honor to our doctors, I love doctors, but I'm telling you, this is it. Can I surprise you? I want to tell you something that many of you may not believe. I hope and pray that you may believe it. I, that's why you see I struggle with tonight's teaching. It is possible for a woman to carry a seed that is for both her husband and these spirits. I wish I'm not the one teaching this. Sometimes this, this, this work is very hard sometimes. It's true. Go back to our villages and hear what our great-grandparents with divination used to say. Sometimes they will see a child and stand and say, no, let me look at this child. And look at this child. And look at this child. And say, no, something is wrong. And this child is born with unusual trouble and unusual abilities. Usually doesn't last for too long and just dies and goes. But within that 12 to 15 years, the trouble that that child causes for the family. What can, this one is not a deliverance issue. This is another seed that is not human. Can I tell you this? Don't feel bad. We are praying. Don't feel bad. This is how fibroid is formed. What you call fibroid is the aberration of the intercourse between these spirits are we together now an attempt for these spirits that's why it grows in the same place where a baby should grow as a baby is growing is growing too and notice that 90 percent of the time it will kill the baby yet you say it's not alive from the womb already ask jacob and esau that from the womb, the children were already there. They were already fighting. Ask Jesus and John. You call them, they are just fetuses. Whereas there was communication going on. When Mary met with um, Elizabeth, the babies too met with themselves. How are you? How are you? We're on our way coming. Oh, I will come before you. Make sure you do it nice. They were interacting. Please sit down. When you know these things, you will appreciate the power of God and the victory of Christ. I know this may look like a messy teaching tonight, but just allow me to tidy this up. And then you will walk back and now find out that nothing just happens. Nothing. Watch this. These demon spirits, till today and till Jesus comes, they are searching for bodies to find expression. They are in our fathers. That's why our fathers behave unusually. They are in our mothers. That's why they behave unusually. Wife, that's the mystery behind the stubbornness and your wise decisions of your husband. He may be well-meaning. Notice that most of those people, a time can come, they are calm and understanding and peaceful and cooperative. And then suddenly something comes. When you are bringing someone out of a prison cell, there's a sign here. That you will never steal anybody's thing. You will sign and say, I won't do anything. Say, oh yeah, be born again. I'm, I, I, I will be a serious person. I will even be serious. For the first two days, he will go to the farm. Doing well. Until that spirit now knows there is a stronghold. Are we together? I will teach you this on deliverance. There is already a doorway that allows it. So the spirit goes on vacation. As that brother is in the farm, he will make another person annoy him. Because all these attributes of the flesh are doors. With a simple anger, it returns. It has entered. The guy doesn't know. All of a sudden, the guy gets up and says, you hit me. And beats him and kills him. He's back to the prison. He's wondering, what am I doing on my way back to the prison? The spirit has come back to his house. Because when a spirit leaves a man, it doesn't wave at you. It allows for some time. The frustration of a lack of habitation will make it come back. And say, that womb I left, let me go back and find out what is there. Oh, there is a child there now. That home I went, there is joy now. I need a space for myself. And the moment they find expression, 
they will have to start executing their own attributes have you not been surprised look at those who steal if they are under the influence of that demon hide anything anywhere the person will stand it's like word of knowledge he will just look around and say Cat, lift that carpet you will carry the money there he doesn't know it's true i'm telling you this you know i'm not lying you hide the money anywhere one day you hide it inside the ceiling he will just stand and stand and look up the spirit is saying look up that's where it is I know I know a true story a true story of a couple I counseled some years ago they were about to get married all of a sudden from nowhere very wonderful lady who loves the Lord the lady brought a report crying that they said she was positive with HIV ah, she even me I was surprised because a lady that I know very well behaved lady I said what happened where did that one come from and all of a sudden when I was looking in the realm of the spirit God just opened my eyes and I, as soon as I touched that spirit something strange happened now I'm, I'm not saying you should go out and create trouble but something strange happened the spirit started manifesting and speaking around and he said at the point of the test it entered the doctor doctors you are my friends I'm just being thank God you are born again we just finished an outreach there are many things that if we do not know there are many people carrying reports that are not true there are many people carrying things that are not true it is this same spirits that appear what is HIV HIV is called AIDS Abi acquired is acquired meaning it's not within you it came from somewhere acquired immunodeficiency syndrome I'm, I, I hope I'm right where do you think it came from where do you think cancer came from when you understand this you will know why all of a sudden Jacob did something do you know I will be showing you Jacob slept and had a dream and Jacob saw where the males that pregnanted the female goats came from he was in a dream he looked above and saw that all the males in the realm of the spirit were spotted Hi. <laughs> it was not Laban's males no they came from somewhere that's why it didn't matter what Laban said the results were manipulated from the realm of the spirit when you are assisted from the realm of the spirit it doesn't matter what the disadvantages are there is a system to change everything this is not my discussion this night but I don't don't tempt me to have to go and show you please that these spirit interactions must be there for Satan and demons to find expression no man just enters trouble like that and no man just comes out like that there must be that spirit interaction let me show you something you're tempting me for us to Genesis 30 let's look at it Genesis 30 25 we'll look at 25 to 43 Jesus thank you pray in the spirit please while we are opening this hallelujah look at this look at this let me talk about Jacob and Laban now I'm establishing a point here and it came to pass when Rachel was born Joseph that Jacob said to Laban send me away that I may go to my place and my country we're reading it's a long reading let's see how fast we can go just keep just keep projecting and let's go he said give me my wives and all of that and all of that go to 28 Jacob is discussing with Laban now and he said appoint me thy wages and I will give thee 29 we're reading down to 40 there about and he said thou knowest that I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me 30 for it was little which thou hast before I came and it is now increased to a multitude and the Lord had blessed thee who blessed thee talk to me who blessed thee the Lord has we'll see how that Lord did the blessing the Lord had blessed thee since my coming and now well shall I provide for my own house 31 and he said what shall I give thee Jacob he said don't give me anything if thou will do with this one thing I will again keep thy flock what is the one thing 32 I will pass through the flock today 
removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats and of such they shall be my hire so he's saying i will go around your ranch all the cows and the sheep that are spotted i will pick them at this point they were not many i hope you know that and then he says so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire you know this and that and that everyone that is not speckled or spotted he was saying that if you find it with me then take me as a thief are you getting the idea now the bible says so laban said behold i would that it might you know might be done according to your word 35 and he removed that day all the goats that were ring straight and spotted and so on and so forth and so forth go to verse 40 go to verse 40 jacob went on a journey there's uh, there's no time to prove it but you will see that jacob simply went on a journey for three days jacob returned back after three days and suddenly saw spotted calves he said no something is going on here the goats and cows and sheep were not pregnant the normal time that goats there because the males that got them pregnant were not part of the fold they came from somewhere the same way the bible never says jesus was pregnant for nine months no it's not on record that jesus was pregnant for nine months jacob did separate the lamb and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring stake and all you know all of this and he put his own flocks and put them you know this and that 41 and it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that jacob laid the rods before his eyes the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods when we read to 43 we stop there but when the cattle were feeble he puts them not in so the feebler were labans and the stronger jacobs last verse 43 then we'll go to verse 41 and the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses now go to chapter 31 let me search it here 31 from verse 10 to 13. Genesis 31. Read with me. One to read. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle had come. I just jumped from verse 1 to 9. Verse 1 to 9 was the frustration of, of Laban's sons. They started saying, so now Jacob has taken everything. What inheritance do we have? And the Bible is showing us how God assisted Jacob to produce that result. Are you ready? And it came to pass that at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up my eyes and saw where? In a dream. So Jacob was dreaming. And the dream now revealed what was happening that was not there physically. What did he see in a dream? I behold the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring staked, speckled, and I beheld. I saw in my dream that there were some cattle that were making these ones to be pregnant that were not part of the are, are you with me now he's not awake oh he's seen in a dream 11 hmm. and the angel of the lord so the angel was there we know that there are angels and other cattle came from another realm he spoke to me in a dream and he said Jacob and I said here I am verse 12 mm. and he said lift now thy eyes and see all the rams an angel is showing him another ram somewhere that is not part of Laban's flock all they needed was Laban's females the males came from another realm the same way all the fallen angels needed was the females of men the males were the angels with their seed All the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring staked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen, I had to introduce some other animals to come and give you speed of result because I have seen the wickedness of Laban. So I came to assist you with extraordinary result that is not of this realm. 13. I am the God of Bethel. This is why I'm doing it where you anointed with a pillar and where you vowed a vow unto me he said arise get thee out of this land 
and out of thy kindred jacob woke up and all of a sudden the males were not seen physically but when the females gave birth they were all speckled and laban said how did this thing happen but God said, Jacob, let me show you. So when you see a woman frying Akara and building a house with that Akara, there is an assistance. It, it cannot just be about 10,000. No, the realm of the spirit came to assist men. This is a testimony of this ministry. This is a testimony of my life. We are not alone. He sent his angel. There is the angel of his presence. And if you don't believe what I just taught you, the devil will destroy you and you will never. Now, when you see unusual results, you don't question it because I have shown you that heaven can assist men. He said, remember the Bethel. I am the God of Bethel. So was that angel an angel? No. I am the God. I came to supervise your speed. I have seen how Laban mocked you. And is it not me that said I will restore? So let me do it now. I will bring my own male cattle from everywhere. Are you seeing why the Bible said the cattle on a thousand key? Where is it? It's not a location on earth. The cattle. God has it. The next time somebody gets a miracle alert and you are asking where did the money come from? Does that sound wise? No. lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant i have taught you now that the realm of the spirit can assist men the same way when you see so that you stop this counseling that doesn't make sense you see an unusual thief an unusual troublemaker a man who marries 11 wives and is not tired that man does not need counsel what's the name of that group that used to discipline men that social group social welfare even if you like report him to EFCC, there is a spirit. A normal man should be satisfied with his wife alone. The moment a spirit comes, no. Unusual characteristics, unusual attributes, unusual wickedness. When a man carries a knife and takes one of our little ones here and is slaughtering a baby like this, my brother, my sister, that's not a normal human being. A spirit is using his hands to hold a knife. Remember that when these spirits show up, they are so wicked. Jesus said one of the signs, he says before the coming of God, it shall be like the days of Noah. That means there will be a repeat of this again. These spirits in an unusual way will multiply wickedness. But the hope is that the power of God too and the assistance from heaven will also be multiplied upon the saints. That means that the revivals that are coming, you will see dimensions of the spirit at work in a man that you have never seen in church history. Spirit. So accidents don't just happen. No. You are just driving and then the car just veers off. My brother, the car did not just veer off. A spirit attempting in frustration to either kill you don't feel bad don't feel bad whether that happened to your loved ones so that's why god is teaching us a pastor can have a ministry and when the ministry wants to rise because he's ignorant of this that spirit can enter him and all of a sudden you will find out that is five months of intense hatred from members they will hate you for no cause and the ministry dies less satan should take an advantage of me demons can enter people demons can enter homes they can enter churches when they enter they execute the will of satan you can be born again they will not touch your spirit but i guarantee you they will come to your mind and build a fortification around your mind and still feel safe as though they were in your spirit so that your being born again makes no difference as far as you are concerned this is the mystery behind these things so you see them in your sleep when you wake, when you sleep and you wake up and read like i shared with you ah we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and you don't know who to tell you are sad 
good things want to happen these wicked spirits come in let me tell you progress and breakthrough is not very difficult it's the spirits that make it so hard you are near your breakthrough like this do you know these spirits can relocate your destiny helper just so that you will suffer while men slept the enemy came with his seed and planted it don't feel embarrassed that when you look at your life you see the outworkings of these seeds because I don't know if we have that time now if we don't have it we'll do part four at after the miracle service no problem I don't just want to rush this you have to appreciate this for me to teach you the dimensions of deliverance because casting out a spirit is only one of the dimensions of deliverance if you stop there you didn't do well because the spirit will return are we together if i push this door open and i leave that door open am i still safe please talk to me that spirit for sure will come back their determination to return to you was not left as a secret in the bible the bible is very clear about the fact that if a demon leaves you it will try to come back that's why you find out that people can be free for 10 years from poverty and then 17 years the spirit now comes he say ah, it's been a while let me come back a man can be married loves his wife after she gives him three or four children and then all of a sudden what he was doing when he was 20 21 comes back when he's 41 that's why you find out that a man loves God and is working passionately and then before you know it when he's age 55 he will go back into a gay lifestyle or do something and you are wondering at 55 the American nation ignored this Satan proposed a doctrine to the West that exited the issue he, he just created a safe zone for himself in our teachings notice that satan didn't remove everything he just found the hardest part of it and created a theology that keeps him safe and look at the result today listen hold on guys let me tell you this listen to me I have been a victim of these things that I'm telling you. If you don't conquer this thing, you will never last. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's the reason why it looks like no matter, no matter how you do well, oh, um, there's no cause in my life. I am free. I don't have any, no devil. Don't talk about any cause to me. The spirit will just keep quiet and be watching you. And all of a sudden, the same way it took your father and rubbished his life, took your mother and rubbished her life, you will suddenly find out that you got married. You find out that you got married. Watch this. And all of a sudden, you will become a replica of your father. A replica. Remember, it started with your father slapping your mother. He said sorry once. Then he did it again. The third time he said, I won't say sorry again. I will give you a dirty slap. I paid your dowry. Now, because you thought you were a pastor, it will leave you just like that. And then you keep managing it for a while. And then after nine years, the demons will make sure it bites you where it is hard. And you turn and give her a slap and find yourself. And two of you will sit down and counsel yourself. Say it will never happen. And before you know it, you would have done it many times. I'm not telling you this to show you how powerful Satan is. I'm only giving you a sense of appreciation because deliverance is possible and complete deliverance is possible. If complete deliverance does not happen to you, you will never possess your possession. Believe me. Believe me. This is the Bible. Obadiah 117. Please give it to us. The sons of Jacob will possess. It is their possession. But there is a mystery. Are you seeing why many of our parents just said, don't worry, I will get the job. For 25 years, they didn't get any other job. 25 years, no other job. No lifting. What of the families where women are the ones who feed the men? If you are a man and you ever try to rise up, 
those horns will squash you down when mommy called me sorry to just make reference to her i saw her text the fact that i don't reply your text doesn't mean i don't look at it when i saw her text i knew immediately what was wrong i knew that they were controlling powers that have followed the life of this dear young man i prayed for him here before he left and i knew that if god does not help this man you will be surprised that one day are you seeing why people go abroad for 10 years and return back like thieves you don't hear from them from a long time you think they built houses they are coming to give you money they return back in shame they start moving from country to country through deserts to arrive in lagos when the young man sent me a text i looked at it somebody gave you a job and people don't just change their mind when things just change suddenly just know that a spirit just came in the same way if it can change for the positive i hate you but i just change you know that ah this is the holy spirit the holy ghost has stepped in the man and i called him how are you my friend he said fine i said let's pray i said when i pray for you you are going to get the job father in the name of jesus it's not what i'm saying jesus said go it is what you are standing on it is not just the articulateness of your words it is the office and the revelation that backs you so you can say one word go and the demons don't hear go the demons see all the mysteries that support what you are saying this is what produces result many people think it is in the articulateness of the english i now standing by my left adjure you that you move now that is grammar my brother demons don't hear grammar the revelation when jesus said go go is not enough to take demons away it was the rock that he was standing on two houses were built it is the rock you are standing on he said this is how i will build my church you will not just speak it is what you are speaking on that supports your results when i prayed for that gentleman i just dropped the phone i knew what would happen because all i did you would think it is me that produced the result i know what to tell the holy spirit i know the factor that must be introduced in that equation i knew that except the angel of the lord comes to rescue and because they are always ascending and descending they confirm the words of his messengers all i did was to create space for the holy spirit let there be space for you in this equation and all of a sudden he steps in and i don't know how many hours i don't think it was up to three hours you see mommy dancing here she's not just dancing for nothing that's why you hear somebody say i just came for koinonia and think the things didn't just change god will examine your equations and see how you threw him out and just say okay let me be introduced here and all of a sudden things change things change i will stop here so that we'll pray after miracle service i will teach you now on casting out devils and i'll teach you deliverance through transformation and the discipline of conformity all of this will come in let's do part four let's not rush this thing i want us to take some time hold on before you stand up to take some time to pray it is not a secret that these demons are around they use all kinds of ways to enter your life and the flesh is their greatest access you are alone in the room and you are hearing sounds bam ceiling window looks like it's opening they are looking for an access point how can i make this person fear and doubt the faithfulness of god so that i can find expression in his life you are just hearing like wind is blowing all of a sudden you imagine somebody has to be near me and then anger have you noticed that every time good things are coming a good relationship a brother just comes just at the point he's about to propose that week something dangerous happens you are at your angriest point and the brother says no i can't marry you then you return back these are the spirits playing on the minds of the saints messing up our breakthroughs the day you are supposed to go for a job interview you are running then your car breaks down your car didn't have any business breaking down but it broke down 
as soon as you arrive there they say sorry the gate is closed so you stand there and say life not life spirits spirits my brother spirits they're about to pay your father his gratuity the demons will hook the money until the day they diagnose him of having cancer that will spend 150,000 for chemotherapy and the rest then the money suddenly comes and because you have to use it to spend it and spend it and spend it and spend it how about students that enter the exam hall they thought they went alone you conduct tutorials for others and enter the exam hall as soon as you sit down you look at the paper but i solved this question yesterday night what happened these demons hijack your understanding when you are out of the exams you go back and see the paper in your house that you solved it with sometimes you're on your way to the exam to write your final year exam and you forget one question paper in your pocket you didn't forget you were assisted to leave it there all of a sudden an invigilator comes and said what is that stand up i said no that's it you are going If Satan can hinder an apostle, it means he can try to hinder breakthrough. He can try to hinder lifting. Anything that is coming to you for your advantage, it is possible for Satan to try to hinder it. Number three, Satan and demons also, they steal, they kill, and they destroy. John 10.10 10 everything that applies to satan also apply to demon spirits satan and indeed demon spirits kill they steal they kill and they destroy john 10:10. 10, 10. the thief cometh not but for to steal most serious arm robbers go in groups are we together when they want to rob say a bank you don't find an individual no matter how strong it's usually a coordinated activity the Bible says he cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So Satan steals. What does he steal? Anything at all. What does he kill? Everyone and everything. Next activity that reveals the modus operandi of Satan. Are you ready? Satan and demons lie. Start that one john okay let me give you one more scripture about stealing killing and destroying matthew chapter 13 and verse 19. please write it down matthew 13 and verse 19. the bible lets us know that satan is a thief jesus was teaching this in the parable of the sower when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not he says then cometh the wicked one another word for satan and catch it away that which, which was sown in his heart. Can you imagine how Satan steals? He can steal and even enter your heart. Your heart that a doctor needs to use knife to open it. Satan can enter and steal. Or your spirit or whatever it is. He can steal anything. No wonder he can put a disease in your body without surgery. No wonder he can put anything there and he can carry something that was good. But in the name of Jesus Christ, he's finally meeting his resistance forever. Yeah. Next point. Satan and demons lie. John 8, 44. Satan, by his consistency of lying, earned himself a title that Jesus himself acknowledged as the father of You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, the lust of your father, ye will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he is in his default state. That means when Satan feels a lie, there's no point feeling guilty. That's who he is. 
There are Yoruba people who speak Yoruba and English and Hausa and other tribes. But when you are speaking your local dialect, you speak it with confidence and joy. Guess what the Bible is telling you? You ever doubted Satan's language? What tribe is he? That's it right there. The Bible says that Satan, when he speaketh a lie, Jesus is talking now. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. The word father there is the same word that is used towards God. Abba, an originator and a defender of a cause. That means you, it came from you and you guard it to make sure it remains. Ah. <laughs> the father of lies. I told you to start that one. You will soon know why. Next point, very quickly. Satan is a master of falsehood. He disguises himself. He uses the strategy of disguise or falsehood. The strategy of disguise or falsehood. Second Corinthians 11 and verse 14. Satan disguises himself. Are you ready? And no marvel, he says, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. One of the strategies of Satan is that he can use the tool of falsehood. He can disguise himself. Next, Satan deceives. Start that one, please. Satan deceives. We're studying the modus operandi of Satan. Satan deceives. Second Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Satan deceives. He's a master deceiver. Are you learning tonight? But I fear, lest by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve, the word there is deceived. He beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know what Paul is saying? Paul is saying that Satan employed a strategy and deceived Eve. You know, I taught you that um, Adam was not deceived. Adam fell because of love. It was Eve that was deceived. Are we together? Absolutely, it's in your Bible. We're going to read that. There is, Adam was not deceived. It was Eve that fell. Eve was deceived. And Adam followed her because he loved her. The second Adam, who is Jesus, was he deceived? He came willingly because he loved his Eve, the church. The same pattern, you see. So Adam, Adam was not deceived. It was Eve that was deceived. No, 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 it doesn't listen. Listen. This I, I already know. I know what is in your heart. And okay, let me show you. First Timothy 2, 2 and verse 14. If you think First Timothy 2 14. 14. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Women fall because of deception. Men fall because of love. So next time you say you are falling in love, ask yourself, must you fall? <laughs> the in love is not the issue. It's the fact that must you... <laughs> Let's get back to our discussion. We're discussing something very serious tonight. I reject distraction in Jesus' name. <laughs> Satan deceives. He's a master deceiver. Are we learning? Revelations 12 and verse 9. One last scripture that talks about 
the extent of his deception and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world can you imagine that he deceives the finally we see from scripture that satan is an accuser the bible calls him the accuser of the brethren he does not just accuse anyhow he looks for brethren the accuser of the brethren we're identifying some of the activities of satan and demons to be able to help us to piece out by the intelligence of the spirit a modus operandi a structure now please write this of all the strategies and operations of satan of all the strategies and the operations of satan the most pronounced in the bible is deception of all the strategies and operations of satan the most pronounced in the bible is deception can you imagine that that of the many strategies that we see that satan deploys the most pronounced based on scripture is deception please say deception one more time say deception write this down what does it mean to deceive we are now building an understanding on the operation of satan demons and the dark kingdom what does it mean to deceive are you ready to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. To deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. Comma, usually for personal gain or to take advantage of. I'll take it again. To deceive means to deliberately underline the word deliberately please to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true comma usually for personal gain or to take advantage of we're defining deception now that to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is a lie. It's not true. For your personal gain, the gain of the deceiver, or so that the deceiver can take advantage of the deceived. Of all the operations of Satan, the most pronounced according to scripture is deception. That means he is a master. He has mastered the art of making people believe what is a lie. And by causing them to believe it, he can take advantage of them. Lest Satan should take advantage of us because we are not ignorant that he is a deceiver. And that the only way he takes advantage of believers is when he brings you to a point where you believe and are convicted in something that is not true powerful write this down are you learning deception which is the same thing as falsehood I want to define it for you now deception which is the same thing as falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead comma hide the truth comma or promote a false belief or idea i'll take it again deception which is the same thing as falsehood deception is a statement or action is a statement or action that is intended to mislead comma hide the truth comma or promote a false belief or idea 
That's the definition of deception. A statement or action that is intended to mislead, hide the truth, or promote a false belief or idea. Full stop. You may want to add this. It is often done for personal gain. Deception or falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, hide the truth, promote a false belief or idea, full stop. It is often done for personal gain. Isn't this powerful? That the chiefest strategy of Satan, as far as carrying out his agenda is, in the midst of all of these activities that we, we listed from scripture, that the greatest and the most pronounced is deception. Write this down, please, about deception. Very important point. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. Wow. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. It's impossible for deception to happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. Because the assignment of the deceiver is to make the deceived to not understand or not receive the truth. That means for you to be a deceiver, the qualification to be a deceiver is that you must have access to the truth. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver, in this case Satan, is aware of the truth. So is it true that Satan knows that Jesus is Lord? Is it true that, Jesus, that Satan knows that there is victory given to the saints? Is it true that he knows that there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved? Is it true that Satan knows that Jesus is now resurrected holding the keys of life? Is it true that Satan knows that Jesus gave us the authority over him? No wonder he does his ministry of deception so well. Because the basis of deception is that you must know the truth. Is someone learning now? It is impossible for a deceiver to be a deceiver in ignorance. Because a deceiver, the character of deception is that the very act of deception is done intentionally. Are we learning now? Let's take a structured biblical study. I wanted to read a few scriptures that talk about deception, but we'll jump it for the sake of time. I want us to take one case study. We are studying now how Satan operates. Are you ready? We want to take one Bible story and then we'll examine it closely. And I taught you here that theologically speaking, there is what we call the law of first mention. That every time you want to study a subject, a thought, or an idea, your first assignment is to go to where it was first referenced in scripture and understand the contextual explanation or usage. That becomes your interpretation everywhere that word or that thought is used. Is that true? So we'll go to Genesis, but before then, let's look at two or three scriptures. John 8, 44. John 8, 44. Let's start from where we left off. Jesus is speaking now. And Jesus himself said a few things that are very interesting about the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer when? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Do you know what this means? Jesus did not say he was ignorant of the truth. He says he refused to abide, to live in the truth. He willfully came out of that realm of truth. He abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Keep that scripture. 2 Corinthians 11, 
3. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. But I fear, Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, so apostle paul here is using a story to show us the deception of satan are you seeing where paul is leading us to now paul is saying if you want to study the deception of satan study what happened with satan and eve in the garden of eden because he's saying satan will still use that strategy against you are you seeing now he's saying just as satan beguiled eve through subtlety he will also come to you and do something to you the same way he walked with Eve. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying when it has to do with that strategy, it is his master strategy, he will not change it. You study Satan's operation by studying what happened between him and Eve. First Timothy 2 and verse 13, where you read and laughed, now I hope you don't laugh again because we're getting into a very serious discussion now. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Do we believe this? Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Journey with me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of the beginnings and see what exactly happened there. Genesis chapter 3. Story, story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman. Now, when you read this, you will think it's just something that happened immediately in a matter of minutes. The Bible is written in summary. And so it does not give us the, the depth of the discussion because this is not just something that happened within minutes. I told you that in studying scripture, you have to use the mind of literature. You have to use the mind of a historian. You have to use the mind of an archaeologist. And then you have to use the understanding of a spiritual man. These are the four components you need to thoroughly study scripture. If all you have is the mind of a spiritual man, as powerful as that is, you will not really understand the Bible. Because the Bible has a literature component the bible has a historical component the bible has an archaeological component and then it has largely a spiritual component are we learning now watch carefully please we are studying satan now and he said unto the woman yea hath god said ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden now please listen carefully Go back to verse 1. Do you know why Satan came to the woman directly to talk to her? It's not because she was female. Mm -mm. There was something about the structure of dominion. Are you getting the point now? That when God gave man dominion, in the Garden of Eden, it was very clear that even though Adam and Eve as spirits had dominion, but based on that earthly structure within the family context in the garden, Adam and man was head over her. Are we together now? And Satan would not come directly and attack the head. But he knew that there was a connection between Adam and Eve. There was something he understood that he would not be able to easily deceive Adam. But he knew that based on that structure, there is a connection between Adam and Eve and the connection is love and that genuine love is love that comes with sacrifice so he didn't need to deal with the man he was not dealing with the man simply because he knew that once he got the woman the love the man had for the woman would be why he would fall so he didn't have to waste his time there <laughs> are you getting the idea now that if I can get Eve you will be seeing it that when Eve ate, she gave her husband what you call eating now. For the sake of this discussion, we'll still keep it at that. Most people think she just ate and called him and said, Sweetheart, where are you? You will find out in the Bible he was standing right there with her. He fell because of love. 
the Bible says Satan came and met the woman. <clears throat> now watch this. Notice the first thing, his conversation with the woman. Yea, had God said. Can you imagine the beginning of his discussion mentioned God? Satan, look at the structure of his deception. Had God said. That means I told you that deception cannot work until what is true is known. Are you seeing the pattern here now? Satan wanted all I need to know is what God told you. That is the raw material for my fabricating my deception. That means Satan has no business coming to your life until God speaks. The moment God speaks, Satan says, now I have something to work with. What did God tell you about your child? What did God tell you about your destiny? What did God tell you about your ministry? Deception is not possible until there is an awareness of the truth. In this case, what God said. Because everything God says is yea and amen. Let God be true and all men liars. Are we learning? And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden of Eden? Are you noticing that there's something with that statement? He was doing something to the truth. When I tell you truth can kill, believe me, it's not only a lie that kills. He did something that forced her to defend what God said. Now the woman, verse 2, the woman said, Satan, you didn't get that right. Let me correct you. This is what he said. We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. And he was listening. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Satan said, thank you. Now, let me show you that I have an advantage of age over you. Verse 4. Do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Are we learning how Satan operates now? When Satan comes to you, the raw material for his attack is what God has said. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Are you seeing now? Verse, do you know what he was doing to her here? He was shaking the basis for her obedience. That means, now that I know what God has said, I know that faith is obedience. My next assignment is to do something to you. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as the gods, knowing good and evil. Satan was saying, God is so insecure. There is something he's hiding from you. And that is why he vetted out his insecurity by putting a strict rule. Don't mind him. Trust me, there is something I know. When you eat this, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like him, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. When the woman saw. Everybody say, when the woman saw. Hmm. The discussion started by saying, but by the time we get to this point, she has perceived. Saw so there does not just mean eyes. She has conceived as a reality. The woman did not fall by eating the fruit. Eating the fruit was proof she had fallen. This was where the fall started. Perception. Don't think he just came to her one day and spoke to her. No. That's why I told you the Bible is written in summary. You, you need to use, you don't come like that in one day and convince someone. Go and read your Bible. The Bible spoke about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. How many times did she come to him? Frequently. J Judas is carried. It was not just once they met him and said, deceive, deceive Jesus. It's within the character of Satan to be consistent. 
The same way you don't come and most times you don't meet a woman once and say, marry me, and then you have to come. Again. That structure. Satan was patient and came. And he said, when the woman finally saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the... That's not normal seeing, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> there is a kind of seeing that had attacked her spirit. Are we together? The Bible says the tree to be desired. Look at all this. Look at these emotional expressions. It's more than just seeing a tree. She was always looking at the tree. What did she now see? The Bible says she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Maybe in another time as God helps us, I will really explain to you what it really means the concept of the tree and the fruit. But so that I don't disrupt the flow of what we're doing, we'll just accept it as eating. But you see, the concept of eating and the tree, these are, these are prophetic expressions. It may not necessarily mean tree and fruit, but it does not interrupt our understanding, even if we understand it that way. So we'll continue. The Bible says she did eat. Please, everybody, read the remaining part and gave also unto her husband with her. Is it in your Bible? What did he do? Did he throw it? She ate. Now watch what happened. Do you know that when she ate, there was no effect. It was when he ate that something happened. Because the sheep only scatters when you strike the shepherd. She ate and she gave him. Ate from deception, he ate from love. In any case, they ate. That's the bottom line. And then the Bible says the moment that happened, notice Satan stopped talking to them. He was over. You thought that after eating, you say, now, how do you feel? That is the structure of deception. Now that he had achieved his goal, he will now leave them with God. And he says, now off I go. The Bible says the eyes of them were opened. Did he tell them something like that will happen? Absolutely. He said your eye will open. But they did not understand what he meant. The Bible says, and they knew. Now notice what happened here. There was already a disruption in the way God arranged the spirit of a man. Because the way God designed man was the spirit of a man was supposed to have the highest level of ascendance in direct touch with the spirit of God. The body would barely be an instrument of execution. Are we together? The mind that consists of the will, the emotion, and the intellect would midwife the spirit and the body. These are just the platforms for the spirit to be able to operate with the body. And now we see that something is wrong. You can see that the soul came alive. The eyes of them were open and they knew they were naked. You see shame, attributes of emotions. They sowed fig leaves and made aprons. They ran away. God is about to speak. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Everybody say fear. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Should you run away from the presence of the Lord? But now we see something happening to them. Are you seeing the way Satan works? He did not have to keep talking. The destruction can happen whether he's there or not. It's a programming. He has done something to them. The same way Satan can come and do something to a village. And after 30 years, it is still working, whether he supervises or not. It's like a software. Now, he left these people. The next time we hear him talking was in answer to a question God asked him. Left the woman. Deception. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam. Are you seeing how God respected his own structure? When he came, he never spoke to the woman until man gave him permission to speak to the woman. 
when he came, he spoke to the man who had that seat of authority and dominion. Adam, you are the one I put alongside your wife. What has happened? I look spiritually and I don't see you sitting on that throne of dominion again. When he said, Adam, where art thou? God, God speaks spiritually. There was a position that you could see. You could look down to the earth and know that the man in charge is seated there. It is that same position that the demon said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. When we look in the spirit, we, all those who have dominion, we see that position. Where are you? Adam, where are you? You are lost. Adam, who shifted you without pushing you? Who shifted you? Who, who gained mastery over you and made you to move? Veer off. You left the place of power and yet force was not used on you. That is the power of deception. I overcame. Hallelujah. He won the victory. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. Listen. Are you seeing what Satan did? They thought it was just a conversation. They did not understand the spiritual implication. Adam, I checked the place of authority and you are not there. Where are you? This is a tragedy that came upon men. You need to learn this because he's coming and he will use the same thing. Remember the structure. What did God say? God did not mean what he would say. And he will keep coming to you every day. He knows that persistence is powerful. Satan does not speak once. Let me tell you how he speaks. He uses words. He uses men. He uses things. He uses pain. He's still the one speaking. He will employ everything until he shifts you from that place. There is a place where when you stand, Adam, now let me teach you something powerful. For as long as man did not cooperate with Satan, Satan looked powerless. He was with them and could not touch them. He was with them and could not touch them. The power of Satan is in your falling for his deception. There was absolutely nothing he could do to Adam and Eve. The best he could do was speak. He had to depend on their seeing and they are participating with his lies. And the Lord told him, where are you? Verse 10. Here's what Adam said. I heard your voice in the garden. But I was afraid. Something has happened to me. I heard your voice. Clearly, I've not lost my hearing. But I've lost my position. I was afraid because I was naked. Do you know what that means? The glory and the Shekinah that covers me has left. Something has happened to me. And I hid myself. Because I know what it means to not be covered by your glory. Verse 11, and he said, who told you that you were naked? Every time God comes to rescue you, the first question is who told you? You have opened up your ears to another influence. That means in any case, whether you are restored or you are deceived, it is based on what you were told. Now understand the power of words. No, Adam, you've fallen. Who told you? I'm tracing the root cause of your problem. It came from information. 
Listen carefully. Dear father, dear grandfather, dear region, where did this witchcraft come from? It was not from the shrine. It came from who told you. Someone called you and said there is a way we make money. In Nigeria, you cannot just make money like that. Let me tell you sincerely, if it's money you want to make, there is one man. You say, no, 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 let me think about it. What, ha is, what was happening to Eve is happening to you. When Satan uses that man, do you see that that was the same thing that happened with Jesus? Satan came to Jesus directly. That was the last time he would come directly. The next time he used the emotion of Peter, then he used Judas. In any case, he felt he got him. Who told you that you were naked? Have you participated with what you heard? Did you do something about what you heard? Because every word we hear does not profit us if we don't mix it with faith. No matter what it is that you hear, if you have not mixed it with faith, the Bible says it will not profit those who hear it. So if Satan says kill yourself, it remains as a thought for as long as you don't act on it. Wow. If you wake up from a dream and in that dream you see an accident and all of a sudden you allow fear and you start thinking that is Satan speaking so this is how I would die you are receiving it you may not know you don't receive by your hands alone the principal way of receiving is your mind you only have with your hand you receive with your spirit you receive with your mind Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldn't eat? The first demonstration of irresponsibility as recorded in the Bible. Are you ready? And the man said, the woman, is that the answer? Adam, have you eaten of the tree? Yes or no? What was his answer? The woman. He's showing you this is the first expression of the weakness that is in humans that we are usually comfortable transferring blames it is not natural for men to take responsibility by men here is genderless humans adam have you eaten of this the woman that you gave me to be with me look at this description not longer the woman i love not longer the one we strolled in the garden together with the woman that you gave me to be with me in other words it's not my fault if i were alone no way satan would not get me i know you are laughing but you understand what god is teaching us here the family i came from is why things are happening like that that's the same answer you are giving why are you not rising because we come from a family of idol worship that's not the answer I know you can laugh at Eve, but we are learning now that many of us have been making the same thing. And for as long as your answer seeks to transfer blame, salvation will be far from you. Are, are we learning now? This is a powerful spiritual concept. Two men were hanging on the cross with Jesus Christ. One of them, the Bible called them thieves. And one of them was quarreling Jesus paraphrasing shame on you we're on the cross you're on the cross you can't save us the other one said we are sinners this man is righteous jesus looked at one and said today you will be with me in paradise what happened to the other one now watch this i'm showing you how satan how man transferred the dominion to satan watch how it happened now every time you pass blame on anything you also give that thing authority over you it's a spiritual principle let me repeat myself again every time you pass blame on anyone or anything you give that thing authority over you blaming situations and circumstances for your life is giving them authority over you no matter how legitimate you think it is the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. 
he did not answer i did it alone he had to tie someone else to cushion his guilt and he said yes i ate but hold on hold on the woman that you gave me is the cause for it now are you seeing that on legal basis god could now talk to the woman because satan has handed over responsibility to her and the lord said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done sadly she made the same mistake and the woman said satan the serpent beguiled me and i did eat what is this that you have done the serpent beguiled me and i did eat verse 14 he goes to satan and the lord god said to the serpent because thou hast done this, thou art caused above all cattle and above all beasts of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go and thus shalt thou eat all the days of your life. Verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. There's no time to now begin to teach you all these things. He says to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife. You see now. You heard the voice of your wife, and you have eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat cost is the ground the ground is anywhere you sow cost is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life 18 thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto you and thou shalt eat of the herb in the field 19 in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return to the ground for out of it was thou taken and dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. Let's stop there. What do we have to learn from this? Number one. Lesson number one. Understanding the operation of Satan, especially his deceptive nature, which is his strongest point over the saints. Number one. I told you that deception cannot happen until there is the awareness of the truth do you know what that means everything god tells you by speaking to you or by his word guard it carefully because somebody is coming there that adversary is coming to vet what god has told you when satan comes to you his primary assignment is to find out what god said because everything god said represents where he's taking you to lesson number two are you ready now guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life guard your ear gate guard your eye gate because these are the principal channels through which satan speaks can i tell you this if you think satan will always appear to you and talk to you it may not always happen like that but he will use your ear gate he will use your eye gate because these are the principal gates to your mind very soon you understand what paul was teaching in his pauline epistle is god helping us tonight number three faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and understanding it is not just faith towards God comes by hearing the word of God but faith towards anything comes by hearing the word of that thing faith towards destruction comes by hearing the word that makes for destruction faith towards failure comes by hearing the word that leads to failure and hearing again until it crystallizes in your heart Satan is a master of deception. He uses the word of God to shift you away from your zone of safety, from your zone of power, from your zone of defense. 
but in the name of Jesus with this spiritual understanding someone is gaining momentum and is gaining power to shake off everything that is an arsenal of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ write this down very quickly levels of satanic influences very powerful truth you're about to learn there are three levels of satanic influences over the saints as revealed from scripture three levels principally number one are you ready number one is called witchcraft the first level of satanic influence over the saints is called witchcraft galatians chapter 3 please and verse 1 let's hurry up for sake of time galatians 3 verse 1 all foolish Galatians, he says, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus had been seen evidently set forth, crucified among you. Now, please look up. The Bible's idea of witchcraft is not drinking blood and eating flesh. Those are just extended meanings. The Bible's idea of witchcraft is not going to a coven in the night and having a meeting i'm not negating those things but i'm telling you that the standard definition of witchcraft from the bible has nothing to do with any of these things witchcraft according to bible definition is anything that can cause you to err using the tool of deception that is witchcraft causing a man to err Causing a man to go out of alignment using the tool of deception is the Bible's definition of witchcraft. The first way that Satan influences men is through witchcraft. That means he uses the tool of deception to cause you to err. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Notice every time there is witchcraft, you see that there is deviation from the truth, there is disobedience in it. What is witchcraft? I wrote here. To cause you to think, to act, and to talk in error using the tool of deception. What is witchcraft again? To cause you to think, to cause you to act, and to cause you to talk in error using the tool of deception. Second Peter chapter 2, we'll read from verse 1 and 2. Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Very quickly. But there are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction last verse verse 2 and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of this is the character of witchcraft the practice of witchcraft does not have to do with some crude african type activity even though there is an expression of it like that but principally Engaging the tool of deception to cause you to think, to act, and to speak in ways that are inconsistent with God's ways is witchcraft. So the first demonic influence that Satan has over men, if allowed, is witchcraft. Number two, are you ready? The second is called manipulation and control of your mind manipulation and control of your mind please start that one because this is where 
even when you are saved, I'm going to be answering the question whether the Christians can be possessed or not. Manipulation and control of your mind. This one is principally in the realm of the mind. Your mind containing your will, your emotions, and your intellect. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 22 and 23. Matthew 16, 22 and 23. Remember the discussion between Jesus and Peter? Jesus was talking about his dying. And the Bible says Peter took him. Who took him? Peter, one of the chief disciples of Jesus. He took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not happen to you. 23. But he turned, he being Jesus, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou serverest not the things that be of God and those that be of men. You want to find the account that he said Satan has desired to sift you, go to Luke 22. We'll read 31 and 32. Synoptic account, same message. The Lord said, Luke 22, 31 and 32. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 32, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Satan came to manipulate the compassion, like I've taught you, of Peter to stop Jesus from dying. Jesus was talking about his death. And to Peter, he did not know. This was a man who it was not long after, I mean, that he had said, I know who thou art. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Next moment, Jesus is telling him, get thee behind me, Satan. Number three, the third level of satanic influence. The third level of satanic influence over the saints is called possession or over men, really. Possession. This talks of complete influence and control of your spirit, mind, and body. Possession. Complete influence and control of your spirit, your mind, and your body. Demons can use, Satan can use witchcraft. Next level, manipulation and control of your mind. Third level, complete possession. Influence and control of your spirit, your mind, your mental faculties, and your body. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. Let's follow closely now. He's teaching us that it is possible for demons to completely possess a man. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling among the tomb? Are you seeing the character of that man now? And no man could bind him. Unusual power. No, not with chains. Verse 4. Because that when he had often, when he had been often bound with fetters and chains, the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Can a normal man easily do that? You see that now. And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, doing what? Crying and cutting himself with stones. This is the standard character of demonic possession. That this man is hurting himself with stones, and yet he cannot stop. Because his spirit, his mental faculties... And sadly, his body is under total control and influence of such a spirit. When Jesus saw, when he saw Jesus afar off, we're about to learn some lessons now. He ran and worshipped him. I ask you again, does Satan know that Jesus is Lord? He's about to negotiate a deal because when he saw Jesus, 
he knew that means every time demons see people who understand their authority they know he saw Jesus and he knew and he came and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of the most high look at that kind of intelligence I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not do you know what this means I use the father's authority that you submit to to plead with you I know you are obedient to the father and remember he is kind and he's loving don't torment us look at Satan for Jesus had said come out of the man thou unclean spirit now I love Jesus and he asked him what is your name and the man answered saying my name is legion for we are many and he besought him much that he should not send them away from the country are you seeing now territorial construct of these spirits that means okay since we are going to leave the man it looks like that negotiation is not working please do us a favor can you command that we just come out of him and look for someone within the territory because based on our structure this is our territory verse 11 now there was nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding and the devils besought him and said i will teach you why demons want bodies send us into the swine that we may enter into them do you know what lesson hold on please go back go back go back to verse 12. How many of you know that Gadara had so many human beings and yet the demons are begging? It took us a long time to prepare this body to host us. I thought they would live and just enter anybody. Satan does not have that kind of power to just enter anyhow. It takes a lot. There are processes. He's telling them that even though there are men, as it is right now, the urgency of wanting a body when are we going to meet a man, deceive him, manipulate him until we gain entrance? Let us go to peaks. Why will Satan have men scattered in the, in the Decapolis and yet look for one man? Because there are rules of engagement. I told you, even Jesus knocks to enter your life. So when you see it look like Satan can just get into any life anyhow, it is a lie from adam and eve and from this madman the demons are pleading we want to leave but there are rules of engagement we are not just going to enter anybody and remember these guys that he's afraid of entering are not born again because jesus had not died and yet he still could not enter them send us to peaks that we may enter into them 13 and forthwith jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep can you see that exactly what was happening to the man before was now happening to the pigs so it was not the bodies it was the influences that was behind it are we together now the bible says they ran down to a steep place there were about two thousand look at how that man was suffering what came out from him entered 2,000 peaks and all of them could not control themselves. Yet one man was carrying that. Imagine the pain that that man was going through. Let's finish. We're reading to 16. 14 now, verse 14. And they that fed the swine, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what was that that was done verse 15 and when they come to Jesus they see that the man who was possessed with the devil and had a legion they saw him sitting and clothed and in his right mind we discussed that last week that immediately after the deliverance you thought the man would go away but the next thing that happened after deliverance was that he was with Jesus. He did not leave Jesus. Next week, we'll be looking at the three levels of deliverance.
that number one, the spirit influences were cast. Number two, he was with Jesus. He remained with Jesus. And he sat down there. And his remaining with Jesus was doing something to his mind. His right mind. And they were afraid. Last verse. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. And also concerning the swine. Now, can a Christian be possessed with demons? The answer is no. A Christian cannot be possessed with demons. The reason is because of the very character of the administration of eternal life. That eternal life demands that you are joined to Christ. And the Bible says, he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. But this is the balance. Just because a Christian cannot be possessed does not mean Satan does not have an activity that a believer can be a victim of. The first two that I listed, witchcraft and manipulation and control, it does not matter how born again that believer is. The cure for witchcraft and the cure for manipulation and control is not just being born again. It's putting on the whole armor of God. I will teach you that one. Are you seeing now? There are many, many believers that are saved and yet will be victims of this. Why? Ephesians 4, 18. Having their understanding darkened. Not having their salvation lost. Having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. A Christian cannot be possessed, but he can be demonized, manipulated, and controlled at the solical realm. Absolutely. Here is where we need to balance in the body of Christ. And most of you know that I love the body of Christ. I'm sent to the body of Christ. But let us not give the devil the authorization to prey on our ignorance. Satan came to Jesus, holy Jesus, righteous Jesus, blameless Jesus. He came to him, spoke with him. He took, it is written, it did not take Jesus being the word to be saved. It didn't take Jesus being born of the word to be saved from that deception. It took him having knowledge and replying back, it is written and get thee behind me. Two things that saved Jesus. It is written and get thee behind me. Understanding of scripture and understanding of authority. Are we learning now? So the whole idea that just because you are saved, automatically, Satan has nothing to do with your life. It's a lie. It's not true. I can tell you by the authority of scripture. It is not true. The disciples, the apostles, they continue to tell you how that Satan would come and attempt to challenge them, challenge their minds, challenge their body, and they continue to stand with the operation of the word of God. When Jesus entered the temple and preached and rebuked spirits, the people did not show any evidence that they had any spirit at work in them. It was when he gave the command. Hallelujah. Three levels of satanic influences. Witchcraft through deception, manipulation and control, largely in the realm of your mind, and then complete possession, influencing your spirit, influencing your mind, and influencing your body. Now, having put down all of these things in our discussion, what then is deliverance? What is deliverance? Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. What exactly is deliverance? And the Lord said, Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Please read verse 8 with me. Ready? Read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large 
unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. I am come down to deliver them. Take note. To take them out and to bring them in. To take them out and to bring them in. Scripture number two. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Recall that I've taught you here that there are two dimensions when it has to do with the dealings of God and man. Number one, there is the prophetic dimension, realities from God's standpoint. That every time God speaks, he speaks from a realm that is finished. And number two, there is the experiential manifestation of that which God intended happening in time. Two dimensions. When you read the Bible, you will see God establish certain things. For instance, none shall say in Zion, I am sick. For instance, we've been delivered. Not we have been not there is deliverance going on. We are delivered. It is our assignment to make that which was spoken become manifest. Are we together now? You have to understand this. Write this down, please. What is deliverance? I was going through the notes that I made last time I was doing Mystery of Deliverance and I saw this definition. I worked on it a bit, but it's a powerful definition. Listen carefully. Generally speaking, the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, danger, and evil. Generally speaking, the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, danger, and evil. Generally speaking, this is just a general idea. The word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, from danger, and from evil. Deliverance also means salvation. Deliverance also means salvation. Generally speaking, deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, danger, evil. Let me define deliverance proper now. Deliverance, I wrote here, is the scriptural strategy. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing I will take it very slowly because I don't want you to miss anything here. As long as it is, obtain grace to write it. There is victory in that sentence. Are we together? Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ. Let me stop there so you write. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ. The victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces. Come on. Over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life 
and destiny of the believer. If we're together, say amen. amen. Now listen as I read it without breaking. You've been writing. I want you to hear now. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially manifesting establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Write this down. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare. Please don't be tired of writing. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ, deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing, underline establishing, and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 4. That means deliverance, and then it extends to spiritual warfare. For the believer in Christ, our idea of deliverance is not fighting for victory. It's engaging the systems that establish and manifest the victory that has been wrought in Christ. Do you understand this now? It's important to get this definition. It will mean the world as far as challenging and contending for that which Christ has given you is concerned. Because there are ideas about deliverance that connotes fighting Satan. So you are not sure whether you win. You just fight and watch as it happens. That is not scriptural. That will be an endless struggle in ignorance until you are defeated. For the believer, our idea of deliverance is engaging the systems and the forces of victory given to us in Christ to establish and manifest our victory in Christ over Satan, over demons, principalities, and powers. 2 Corinthians 2.14 2 Corinthians 2.14 2 1 4. Do we have that? Now thanks be unto God. Let's read together. Now thanks be unto God, which caused us to triumph where? In Christ. Not by our ability. In Christ. And make it manifest. That's right. The savor of this knowledge by us in every place. Now thanks be to God. Who causes us to triumph? We triumph. But there is one who causes us to triumph. The Bible calls him Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Let's read together again. Ready? One to read. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Shout amen. But thanks be to God, which giveth us, giveth us the victory. So when it has to do with deliverance, your concern is not fighting Satan. Your concern is not fighting demons. Your concern is not fighting causes. Your concern is not fighting yokes. Are we together? Your concern is taking advantage of what we call the weapons of victory that have been given to you in Christ. We are going to deal with the weapons. What are they? Because the Bible says to put the whole armor of God. But there are weapons of victory that have been given to us. Weapon number one, the power of the word. Weapon number two, the power of the blood. Weapon number three, the power of the name. Given to us. The power of the word. We'll deal with, with that when we go into administering deliverance. The power of the word 
the power of the blood, the power of the name. All of them are not doing the same thing. No. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and the destiny of the believer. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer is not is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. We are not fighting for it. We have it already. But now our assignment is to know how to engage it to make it manifest. The Bible says right from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But Jesus had to come physically and engage the tool of being a man, walking in the earth walk, dying, shedding his blood, going to Hades, resurrecting to make that which was finished become manifest today. Hallelujah. Are you learning now? Before we pray, let me end tonight's discussion by teaching you something very powerful. Access points. Access points. Hmm. That means by what access points does Satan and demons get into the life of the believer or find a place in their minds, their bodies? Listen, by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible from cover to cover. And by the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of listening to people who really understand this subject. I have studied my Bible and I found out as complicated as Satan causes, yokes, altars, foundations, ancestry, and all these ills are, there are only three access points that Satan has to man and even the believer. Are you ready now? I may not go into in-depth of detail. We'll leave that one for next week because I want us to take the remaining time and pray. For all the sessions, we have some time to pray because there are people who, as you are hearing now, God is granting you that light. And you are seeing that the strength of Satan is in my cooperating with him through ignorance, through, through deception. He will roar like a lion and act as if he will eat you out. When he does, ask him why he did not enter Eve and Adam immediately. Ask him why when the spirits left the madman, they did not enter another man. He should give you the explanation. Where did he keep his power that he could not simply pick any man? Just because you come from a village where there is that cause does not mean you can allow Satan to just manipulate you like that. Now listen carefully. You are about to learn something that is very, very powerful. Access points. Please write. Are you ready? There are three biblical access points. Number one, covenants. Aha, uh -huh. covenants. Write it down. The first access point that gives Satan legitimate access to the lives of men Sadly, including believers, covenants. Please just write it. Number two, ignorance. Ignorance. Number three, disobedience. These are the three biblical access points and the only access points that Satan has. If you ever find Satan manipulating a life a destiny a region a family i don't care how long i don't care how great 
Believe me when I tell you, it is one or more or all of these access points. Number one, covenant. Number two, disobedience, ignorance. Number three, of the three, the most effective for Satan is covenant. Do you know why? Because covenants have a transgenerational implication. Covenants, ignorance, and disobedience are all interrelated. But covenants seem to be powerful because it is on legal basis. Let me touch on covenants. The idea of covenant was not invented by Satan. The idea of covenant was invented by God. It was God's own intelligence to manage the inconsistencies and to manage the emotional frailty of man. Listen carefully. God gave man a will and the fallen man by his design is frail with several emotional vacillations and if man is going to partner with God sustainably there has to be a way of binding man that is greater than his emotions covenants because covenant is a non-emotional activity that means you can't just decide to change it anything God wants to do with man that he wants to take seriously he will tie a covenant to it my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my lips you know believers play with the idea of covenants and you will see that everything God takes seriously marriage he took it seriously and he tied it to a covenant do you know why because he knows under normal circumstances the couple can run away by the next day so he put covenant a non-emotional binding so that it's not about what you feel or you don't feel there is an influence that is higher than your emotional vacillations salvation is a covenant whosoever believes him if not there are people who can be so bad they don't deserve to be saved however because it is a covenant whosoever calls upon the name of the lord it does not matter who that person is provided you confess with your heart let me tell you if you are given the keys for salvation there are people whose level of evil if you see them you will tell them don't near this altar however because it is a covenant whosoever believes in him even if you are Saul even if you are Paul whosoever the only personalities that salvation does not capture are fallen angels salvation is not for angels and non-human spirits I'll be teaching you the rules of engagement that is why Satan and demons cannot be forgiven mm -mm. salvation is for men salvation is for men the benefit of salvation extends to creation but animals don't have to give their life to Jesus. They are already under the dominion of man. The same way when Eve ate, nothing happened till Adam ate. That is the same way. What animals and plants do does not matter, provided the man in control is still in touch with God. Are you seeing that now? Animals and seas and all of this only are harsh to man because man had willfully given his authority to Satan. I pray you're getting what I'm teaching you. Covenants are very powerful. Everything that God wants to do with you, if he wants to take you seriously, there will be covenants. Because by the frail nature of men, that's why you hear that there are relationships called covenant relationships, non-emotional. Is that true? When you get a job, watch this. It may not be called covenant, but there is something given to you called an employment letter. Is that true? It clearly spells the terms. You are going to be giving 500,000 every month. They calculate it for you. 
per annum. You have 30 days, one month leave. You can spread it three or four times. They give you all of those things and then you sign. The signing is a declaration of your consent that if for any reason I violate these terms, is that true? The company has a right to punish me based on their modus operandi. And that if I comply with these terms, I have a right to take the company to court for defaulting. Covenants. Say covenants. That is the reason why when Satan came to our forefathers, he did not suggest. He called them and said, you want me to help you? Let us have an agreement. Now you see, an altar is simply a system of authorization. Again, we'll discuss that next week. When we talk about altars, an altar, because you will see that what we call the mercy seat in heaven, in fact, God himself sits, his throne is an altar. A system of authorization. Let us therefore come before the throne of grace that we may obtain from that throne. He literally sits on an altar. An altar is a system of authorization. The assignment of an altar is to insist that the terms of a covenant remain binding, even when those who initiated it are no more. An altar is the spiritual system that supervises compliance to covenants. There is no true covenant until there is an altar, and that altar is built and ratified with blood. So that even though our forefathers have long gone, even though those who brought all kinds of demonic things have long gone, but the altars that represent the witness are still there. So after 50 years, 100 years, the spirits have legitimate access to the people within that region. And every time you want to accuse them, they go back and make reference. The altar remains a witness. I am not an illegal occupant in this land. I was willfully invited and your forefathers and you were in the loins of your forefathers. That is the reason why the sacrament of the communion and the sacrament of baptisms, these are covenant type things too. How did you get into Christ? It was by the mystery of that covenant. Drink this. This is my blood of the new covenant. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Are we together now? Watch this. When the angel of death was going to pass over Egypt, remember the condition for salvation was not your personal righteousness, whether you were a Jew or not. Just find a house. The house did not have emotions. Provided there is blood on the house, whoever is in it, you are saved. But when you are in that house, even though you are saved, there will still be a difference. If you wanted to become a Jew there, you have to submit yourself to circumcision. However, as far as safety from the angel of death is concerned, the angel does not see men. He's looking for the blood. You know why? Because the angel of death was mandated to kill everybody. And like we say in theology, when he came to some homes, he found them already dead. Because the blood is a sign that the death that should happen has happened. So the angel of death will pass. As far as the angel of death is concerned, he killed everybody. It's only that when he came, some people, someone had helped him kill the ones in the house. So he moves to the house where there is no blood and creates blood there. Listen. That is the same way when a covenant has been ratified by blood, an authorization is given that everybody who comes from this region, this spirit, when you see them, have no fear. Through ancestry, through bloodline, or through their personal activities, they have brought themselves to that point. That is the reason why when you are dealing with issues of legal access, you do not cast it in Jesus' name. It is the blood that speaks. There are rules of engagement. Look at me. As powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. You would think God would look at man and say, I am God, I am creator. Man, be free. No. When he gave Satan the authority, it was willful and it would take the blood. 
this is why a lot of believers just pray and say it is done and it is not done because they do not understand the power of the covenant that brought them that trouble go and read the history of many lands you will hear that they bury human beings they bury people alive do you know the power of blood and the power human beings were the zenith of god's creation and you will not just carelessly say i don't believe i force my mind to think right you are joking it takes the blood and you see in the realm of the spirit blood is currency and from the physical world you know that there is dollars there's naira there's pounds there's whatever it is i don't know how much one dollar is to naira now don't say it hallelujah but one thing we know is that it's not one naira to one dollar are we together because the blood of jesus speaks better things every blood speaks something but with respect to what we want the only blood that can speak to the degree one million naira can pay for rent of a certain kind of house but you can look at a certain house and you know that as wonderful as one million is it can't go beyond it you will need something else the blood of abel the blood of bulls the blood of goats they could do something in the realm of the spirit but when jesus came listen please don't mix next next week as i teach you the power of the blood the blood is powerful everybody's blood including your own you will be learning that the blood is one of the weaknesses on earth do you know what that means there are three things that have lived as long as the earth one of it is water this water you are drinking you are not the first person to drink it because it recycles you don't know who else has taken it before it got to you that's why the bible says water is a weakness it has lived long on earth recycling itself and blood nobody invents his own blood it is past that means the blood in everybody is typically older than that person except you are denying biology is that true i'm not a doctor but let's be intelligent for god's sake it took that blood to bring you so the blood cannot be as the same age with you There are three witnesses in heaven the spirit the word and the father the spirit and the word and these three agree and on earth there are three witnesses the spirit the water and the blood many of us have found ourselves in situation today listen to me we're wrapping up you have prayed and prayed and prayed and fasted and as soon as you are done with the fasting the same thing you prayed about happens casually as if you were wasting your time in all that fasting you were praying to stop some spirit that is coming to molest you and just when you finish the last fast that sleep you just took a little siesta and that spirit comes again to rubbish your fasting because there are rules of engagement there are people who will not listen to me the fact that you are not listening to me is a sign that there is an attack already that is a symptom of an attack listen i will always tell you i'm not just speaking from scripture alone i'm speaking from experience there are things in your life that will never grow there are things in your life that will never thrive until you understand the rules of engagement for everybody seated here under the sound of my voice listen to me who is trusting god for some kind of liberty for yourself 
for your children or for your family please hear me there are only three access points as complicated as your life may seem don't let the devil confuse you it looks like there are one million doorways it's a lie there are only three access points one covenants two ignorance three disobedience that's it so you know what to close to be free and ye shall know the truth when you know the truth when both the deceived and the deceiver know the truth deception dies the strength of deception is that the deceiver knows the truth and that's what he uses as an advantage when the ignorance of the deceived cooperates with the knowledge of the deceiver deception happens the cure is not necessarily driving the deceiver alone but that the deceived must also come to the point of knowledge when you come to that point of knowledge now the deceiver does not have an advantage over you if a visitor comes to meet two of us or someone comes to meet you and your say your sibling and he gives 10, 10,000, and he says, give everybody. If you didn't hear it or you didn't know that there is a share for you there, the person can even give you 1,000 and you can kneel down. He can even say, go away. This was for me. Is that true? But if for any reason you find a way, when the person wants to solve that problem, he will come again. And he will say, let me repeat what I said. I said, this 10,000 is for everybody. When you hear it, that contention dies. Because immediately now you know the truth. And based on the truth you know, you can say my 10,000. No stories. Hand it over to me now in peace. Your boldness is based on the quality of the information and the persuasion that you have. When you rebuke the devil and speak and then you go back and you are afraid and say, ah, did I talk too much? Oh God, forgive me. It's because you are not sure of something that generates the power and the courage. Listen, I have held many charms with my bare hands. I have prayed for many people. This is what I do. I have seen many spirits. I have met many demon spirits. I can tell you the strength of Satan is in his power to deceive. The strength of Satan is in the continual ignorance of the saints. The strength of Satan is in the inaccurate construction of our spiritual understanding. For John 1, 5 says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. When you go to your village, you may, most likely may see shrines. You most likely may see a lot of demonic things around. Just toying it with ignorance will cause you casualties. But when light comes, I don't know how true it is, but I hear is the story of Archbishop Benson Idahosa. When I think someone dropped a dead chicken or something of that sort, and they saw the chicken, it was supposed to be a ritual for them to die. And they carried the chicken and said, we can't waste this chicken like this. And they boiled it and ate it in peace and they went and slept and they woke up because you see before satan attacks he finds out what god told you and he finds out whether you know and believe what god told you the trouble is if you believe what god told you and you know how to make it happen and remain in your life now you have defeated him totally one last scripture and then we'll begin our prayer. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Let's start from verse 
That should be 24. Isaiah 49, 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? It's a question. Or the lawful captive? You know who a lawful captive is? A lawful captive is one who was bought from a slave master. Because those days they used to sell human beings just like chickens. And so if I'm a slave and my slave master comes and exchange money with someone and they transfer me, I am still a slave. I am a lawful captive. Number two, if a king leads a delegation to go for war and they conquer the people and kill the king, all the people within that land become slaves. Is that true? They are called lawful captives. For instance, Israel in Egypt. They were lawful captives. That's why they could whip them to build those pyramids and all those Egyptian buildings. But he's saying, is there a possibility that when the mighty has taken a prey or the lawful captive, can he be delivered? Let the Lord answer it by himself. But thus saith the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for i will contend with him that contended with thee and i will save your children there is a cure to demonic covenants there is a cure to yokes and spells and hexes and all of these things please hear me there is a cure hmm. when Jesus Christ hung on that cross it was not just the body of a 33 year old man hanging his blood was touching the earth that old earth that is one of the witnesses when he drained his blood and according to the revelation of Paul to the church in he the Hebrew church when he went as a high priest and a lamb also he poured his blood once and for all and he returned back to the earth and said all hail he said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me listen John said, I wept for no man. That means men are doomed. I wept for no man is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder said, weep not. Weep not. Oh, crying comes to an end. Weep not. Weep not. For behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has prevailed the word prevailed means qualified to open the book and lose the seven seals verse 6 and I beheld and in the midst of the throne were four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though he had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes the lamb that was slain now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise up we raise up for you are god and god alone Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne, we raise a sound. Listen, can I tell you this? The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Listen, listen. 
There are people today who under normal circumstances you should not rise. I don't know what my forefathers did. I don't know what they did. In, in dating, there is what we call AD and BC. Is that true? The middle man was Jesus Christ. I may not know what happened before he came, but the good news is that he came. He came. He came. Please listen to me. Your destiny depends on what you are hearing. Remember everything I taught you today. Satan is not looking for your money. He's not looking for your fruitfulness. He's not looking for your job. He's not looking for your health. He's looking for loyalty. Transgenerational loyalty. And that the structure of his operation largely is deception. He manipulates strategies that fights the word of God. The principal raw material for his fashioning his attack against you is the word of God. It's amazing that it's not only God and believers that use the word of God. Satan uses it too. It is his principal raw material. Hear me. You hear of young men going to go and do money ritual. You will never see Satan following them. Yet he's the one moving them. Deception. Listen. And when they go and do the money ritual, you will see that there are physical evidences. Money comes, so they'll go and do it again. Because they don't know what else. Satan will never tell you the complete story. And he will never tell you the whole truth. He will doctor the truth to present it in a way that provides an advantage for him. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. All truth. Satan has deceived pastors. Satan has deceived churches. For instance, the understanding and the theology that you should just concentrate on serving God in your spiritual life and don't worry whether you are doing well or not, whether your finances are doing well. It looks like a sincere message, but that is a destructive message. Many sincere people have received it, and today they cannot pay the school fees of their children, and today they are in trouble. And then for others who come and fall into this deception, everything is about prosperity and prosperity and money and making it and doing all of this and they forget about strengthening believers to be strong, no knowledge of the truth, no evangelism, no nothing. And people become carnally minded. All they want is competition of clothes and cars and all of that. That is another kind of error. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will bring the whole truth and create a balanced, structured growth. Another kind of lie that Satan is so mighty, you don't know what he can do. Be afraid and be watching. Always be in a position of warfare. And by warfare, they mean just be ready to fight. That is not scriptural. It may be sincere. It may be well-meaning. By well-meaning people, but believe me from the authority of God's word, that is not the position of the believer. We have been given a position of victory, victory, victory in Christ. Then the ones who say, ignore everything, don't worry about anything, provided you are happy, you are fine. And the devil likes such sermons. And he continues to use subtlety to wreak havoc over people. Satan will join the heads of a husband and wife and stand behind and watch them in ignorance, blaming one another for food, for car, for house rent, and it is none of those issues. The adversary. Join the heads of people and go back and watch with joy. Now you are getting intelligence that everything that happens in your life, among the many factors you put together to interpret the happenings in your life, do not forget to tap into the wisdom of the spirit. Be able to discern his deception. The way my husband has been behaving in the last two weeks, something is wrong. 
you don't just say i will show you that i'm a wife you think you just married a foolish person when you think like that he has also deceived you to join your head together indeed one person has to create the advantage in that equation and in that case let it be you and you go and begin to pray now i will teach you by next week when we are dealing with administering deliverance because most believers say pray but most believers don't know what they're saying this idea of praying does not just mean talk to god mm -mm. god is not the only person you talk to in prayer there are times you talk to the situation there are times you talk to the devil there are times that you talk to you engage and call into remembrance the integrity of god all of it is called prayer so don't say i prayed we need to vet what you did based on the situation you are trying to handle just because you were given injection does not mean you were given the right treatment we have to look at what was wrong with you and who gave you the injection and what you were given and we can say no you have typhoid this is not the treatment for typhoid are we together so just because you feel the pain of injection you can say i received the injection i should be well that's what is frustrating many believers because they will tell you apostle i have prayed you don't look nobody prays like me i agree let's hear what you have been saying let's understand to who you have been talking first let me know what you want to achieve you will find out that many believers have just been wasting their time when they say pray they just they just mean talk talk loud add it again to god round up you have prayed you will never get victory that way it takes intelligence to understand what to say there were times jesus spoke to the father father i thank thee because you hear me and he turned and said open the tomb lazarus come forth notice the protocol when he was about to break bread he gave thanks and said go and share it is that how you multiply he never said multiply this bread he just said give give thanks go and multiply it when he stood before demons he did not talk to the father he rebuked the spirits go when he sent the disciples he said in my name when you find the spirits use my office my name does not mean j-e-s-u-s -E my name means the consciousness of my office i have given you a position use it when you see satan and they returned back with shock and they said even do you know the most outstanding miracle every miracle jesus did had been done in the old testament the only miracle that had not been done in the new testament was a miracle of deliverance never had a man used authority and a name to remove any demon you don't find that in the old testament you find them playing strings and the demons living are we together now but you do not find anybody using a name to remove any demon it's not done any in fact what they do is they will kill the person they stone the person who is demonized when he dies they now frustrate the demon because like you have learned it takes a long time for demons to find bodies they don't just find any body they can find any mind but they don't just find any body bodies are scarce bodies are scarce that's why a legion will live in one body because bodies are scarce are you ready to pray i made up my mind that i will open up the truth to god's people to really understand with balance and with understanding don't just say i'm born again and everything is over it may not be very accurate you need to be instructed and to have superior spiritual understanding for now you understand what deliverance is that it has to do with establishing and manifesting your victory not fighting for it hallelujah you have won the victory Hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won it all for me, hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won the victory. I'm 
and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. points. Prayer point number one, I taught you the three levels of demonic influences. You are going to pray and immune yourself by knowledge and declare that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, for you and for your loved ones, whether it is witchcraft through deception, whether it is manipulation and control of your mental faculties, whether it's possession of your unsaved loved ones, declare in the name of Jesus that you are free completely from this. Open your mouth and begin to pray. 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 Shapekatos koto parakata. Embreke te parakosh katila kataba. Ebrakatos kali parusiata. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Shaprande ke pakatos kalika pras, e prote ke parakatos ke tele makata. Hallelujah. We're still praying. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Please give us verse five. Second Corinthians ten, and let's start from verse four. Second Corinthians ten four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds you know what a stronghold is a stronghold is a negative mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the victim remains in that thought pattern they are called strongholds when a wrong mindset now has the fortification of demon spirits it is that state that makes the individual the word of god of non-effect casting down imaginations from the word imagery and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity help me every thought this is the realm of warfare your mind even though satan knows that you have the victory he knows that your mind is part of the participatory systems that will make victory manifest so he will hijack your thinking are you ready to pray lay your hands on your head representing your mind and i want you to begin to prophesy i have a sound mind in the name of jesus a mindset that is word based word compliance word based word compliant someone is praying lay your hands on your head prophetically over your children someone is praying every wrong thinking every wrong teaching every wrong understanding cultural demonic sociological that is authorizing darkness to take advantage of me in the name of jesus i cast down every imagination Sustained faulty thinking patterns that came from culture 
that came from your failure, that came from your association, that came from the poor mentorship platforms that has built an inaccurate understanding about God. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. Prayer point number two. This is the last prayer point now. Please, let me pray for you and beseech you. Don't miss next week's service. Next week's service is another miracle service. I know we have a monthly miracle service, but that is when I'm going to be ministering. I will be taking out time. We are going to be breaking yokes and curses and all kinds of demonic things. And I will not only be praying for you, I will be teaching you that you will go back home and it will be like wildfire. That all this nonsense that has trapped people down, it must give way once and for all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now listen to me. You are going to engage the blood. Just one last prayer. Can I tell you this? I told you when Satan is afflicting an individual on legal basis, you don't cast him. You engage the blood. I'll be teaching you more about the blood next week. But you see, the blood is the system that vetoes every legal operation of Satan because the blood is payment too. Are we together? Satan, when we, some of you who are into the financials, banking and the rest, they call banks systems of settlement. Is that true? If I buy something and I buy whatever it is, when you pay me, you have settled me. It's a system of appeasal. Transactions are simply systems of appeasal. That's what happens in the realm of the spirit. The blood of Abel was crying because there was injustice. It was crying for appeasal. And every time Satan stands to accuse you before God, accuse your family before God if the blood does not speak he is right so what you do in that state is to plead the blood the moment you plead the blood the scene of judgment changes it's no longer you it will be Jesus standing there I want you to understand the revelation behind the blood it does not matter whether some of you here are legal people the moment you bring the blood the accused no longer becomes the accused. The accused becomes Jesus. Only one question will be asked of Satan. Who sinned that Jesus was crucified? It was not him. If a sinless man can become guilty, then a guilty man can be declared righteous. Based on that, the judge of all the ages will say you are not guilty once and for all. Are you ready to plead the blood? Remember what I taught you now, that in pleading the blood, you no longer become the accused. Your family no longer becomes the accused. Jesus stands in your stead, the advocate. Now, I want you to plead the blood over your wife, your husband, listen, your children, your business, your family. Mention them by name if you can. Every legal access that is giving Satan access over my life by the blood of Jesus I declare that voice is silence lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray the advocate stands in your stead the advocate speaks in your stead the advocate 
he does not fail the judge of all the earth if the sinless one can become the guilty one then the guilty one can be declared not guilty go ahead and let the blood speak even for the sins of the fathers even for the sins of territories even for the sins of nations by the blood we call for the advocacy of Jesus over the matters of life and destiny over the matters of altars and covenants over the matters of decrees and agreements blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us he nailed it to his cross hallelujah hallelujah please shout this say after me say in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that by the blood of Jesus the blood of the eternal covenant every legal access that Satan has over my life over my family over my children over my territory by the blood of Jesus I declare that access broken now I decree and I declare that I am a partaker of the righteousness of Jesus Christ therefore I pass a decree as one anointed of God Satan take your hands of my life, of my job, of my destiny, of my health. I decree it is a new season. I decree only the word of the Lord comes to pass in my life. Your strategies of deception over me will not work again. I decree that I have spiritual enlightenment I am a child of God. You have no power over me. The blood speaks against you. It speaks for me, but it speaks against you. In Jesus' name I pray. Give Jesus a big hand clap and a shout of praise. Hallelujah. We're wrapping up resist the devil and he will flee you don't resist him by just saying go you resist him by bringing forth your strong reasons he said present your cause bring forth your strong reason the strongest reason is the blood are we together let me make the altar call Thank you for your patience. Please, let's keep standing to honor those who would be coming. I told you that salvation is the greatest form of deliverance. Because if you are not a bona fide partaker of the life of God, then you remain on legal basis a victim of Satan. He has right and authorization to afflict you. There are people here, you are listening to me, you are in this auditorium, across the balconies, outside, and following across the globe. You are saying, Apostle, give me a chance. I need to experience this deliverance fast. Or there are people who are saying, I need renewal of my relationship with Jesus. Following this series, I have seen the necessity for Jesus. If you belong to any of these two categories, I'm going to count one to five very quickly. For sake of time, I want you to boldly leave your seat. Remember what I taught you about deception. Don't give in to Satan. And don't wait for someone to stand before you come. As I begin to count, I want you to leave your seat. You are inside here. You are around. Please give them room so that they can come quickly and come and stand. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. I believe someone is coming to Jesus. Young and old, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Is there anyone coming to Jesus? God bless you. 
God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. Come right to the front here. All overflows. Just move to your LED screens. And all following from your homes, following from everywhere, this is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Win that war right now. Do not allow Satan to take advantage of you. There is a bailout system in Christ. Let's celebrate them as they come. Let's celebrate them as they come. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please, if you're coming, just rush and come. I'm about to lead the people through the prayer session right now. I salute every one of you for making this bold and noble decision. God bless you. Please join them quickly. Thank you for making this decision. We're teaching on the deliverance series and believe me, God means business with us. He means business with you. Thank you for that bold decision. It is only Satan who will be losing in this series. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now may I request that you lift your right hand, lift it high above your head. Please, if you are joining quickly, just come and stand very quickly, very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say this after me. Listen, mean it from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that it is within your power to deliver me from the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave. I declare that I believe in Jesus and by my faith in him, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign with Christ. The power of Satan, the power of sin, the power of hell and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I am a child of God. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come declaring their faith in Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare your sins forgiven. And I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. I declare may you be grounded and established in righteousness. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Let's celebrate them. Now, I want you to please follow the counselors by my right, which is your left, all of you just move in concert and the counselors will have a word or two with you and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.